so basically, where I am with this, <laughs> um, this Matrix movie coming out doesn't exist to me. It's it was made because I think now this may be a tip that I, I don't think you guys maybe talked about on anything. It's basically um, Lana Wachowski and the three and the two writers and the composer basically did this kind of talk in the Berlin first festival, and they then asked Lana Wachowski, "That's okay. What's where did you get up with the idea of doing a Matrix?" And she said, "That look, Warner kept on." giving them truckloads of money no no they gave them crazy amounts of money to do them other made matrix they said no 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 so i said obviously when the parents died it was really really tough and so forth and they're trying to deal with grief and then she said that you know when she was sort of like in a very bad bad place what gave her solace was neo and trinity and the first thing that i noticed was Neil, Trinity, but Sorry, can, I, can I ask a quick question before you get too deep into this? Before, mm. just is anybody, if somebody has blocked you on WhatsApp, does anybody know how to get around that? <laughs> just yes or no? Does anybody know? No? Okay, continue. No, I don't think I know how. All right, continue. Um, I think there are ways, but I'll tell you, <laughs> there might be ways. Though. All right, okay, good, good, good. Right. <laughs> okay, so, um, so when she mentioned that okay, Neo and Trinity are like the um, um, the ones that gave her solace, I was like, there's a name missing. Why is Morpheus not one of the names that are missing? That that would that 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 that's the, the, the names that would give you solace. She can't. So at that very moment, I was like, okay, there's a problem here. Let me not say that. And I think the biggest issue is. <laughs> a lack of appreciation of Morpheus. Because for me, I think it is beyond insulting and beyond disrespectful for Yahya Abdul Martin II, who is nowhere near the acting talent that Lawrence Fishburne is, just to be handed in or he's the new Mor Morpheus. So um if you're gonna do like a because basically there's an animatrix um story in the so sorry in the matrix comics there's, there's a story in the matrix comics of a very of a young morpheus when he's like 10 or 11. cool tell that story but if it's like an actual adult morpheus and you're getting a dude who is now let's face it he's the new go-to black dude that's who this yaya abdul martin guy is. he's the new <laughs> yeah no no yeah he's 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 the go-to black dude hey do you want a black star yeah let's because he's in everything. He's in everything. He's in Aquaman. He was in Watchmen. He was in he was in, in Candyman. He's in he's in everything. You know. So, so much to the point where I go to his Instagram and guy said, "My yeah, yeah, man, another role booked man." Yeah. So it's now he's now the the it's guy, which is even more insulting, because this isn't a role just for the cool it's guy. No, this is a role for one man, Lawrence Fishburne. So my thing is that when Lana said that, I was like, oh, okay. The way this Matrix 4 has been conceived is just totally messed up. And even beyond that, so I'm looking at the guys that she was with on the stage. So to your right is Tom Tikwa, who is a filmmaker and composer. So he's basically John Carpenter. Because John, John Carpenter did his own music for his own films. So that's what, what, that's what you have. Instead of Don Davis, who composes music 24-7, you have a guy who, oh yeah, I just do some composing on the side as well as being a filmmaker. Then to your left, you've got, I can't remember this, I think this was one of these writers doing, and this David Mitchell, who's like an author. And it's like, when I view this, I say to myself that, why didn't the Lily Wachowski not come in and do this? Because we, when it goes to The Matrix, it's, 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 look, what, uh, this is go go so deep. Okay. When it goes to the matrix and so forth, it was two brains. But you know what? I'm I'm going to come out and just say. <laughs> think, now, like, long, think, think, look, think, think. That's long. why I'm. That's why I'm doing this recording because it's good. If that this you're is going to than say being alive. what I think you're going to say. <laughs> Think long and hard. <laughs> okay, look, I'm looking. Look, it's recorded, so fine. I can easily just re. I, this can easily not never be found. 
when they made the first matrix oh god in their brains they were guys oh god here we go <laughs> now i was reading the interviews and it said that when they began to have these kinds of things of becoming a woman and so forth was when they were making reloaded and revolutions so really was saying that like they were really dealing with a lot of that stuff during the making of reloaded and Re revolutions hence why i remember me and phantom hope having this conversation way back that revolutions just seemed a bit visually different you know and it just seemed to veer off very aggressively as opposed to the other or the other films you know but then when you just look at the matrix they in my mind of course they may have did stuff in but in my mind there were guys there so the issue you have here is and i've seen speed racer i've seen cloud atlas i've seen jupiter ascending i've seen um um sense eight the nature of the films they've made especially since they've made their transitions are completely different from what matrix and reloaded away question though is um did they, did they film Reloaded and Revolutions back to back? Wasn't yes. that back to back? Yes. But you liked Reloaded a lot more though, right? I liked it a lot more, but you could see, basically the thing about Reloaded is this. Reloaded is a, as I grow older, I now realize Reloaded is compromised. Like I will always personally, personally prefer Reloaded to Matrix, but Matrix is, the, is a much better film. It's a much better, better film that's, that holds it's on, but Reloaded is common because Reloaded is dependent on revolutions. Totally dependent on revolutions. It literally is like Reloaded isn't like Back to the Future, Future 2, Godfather 2, or Empire Strikes Back, where those are quality films in and of themselves. Reloaded is literally like, no, this film can only truly work if revolutions works. You know? So my thing though is that, yeah, even if they, they film this back to the back, I think by the time it's got to revolutions, it just became this crazy thing. And even now, you now have a situation where we were trying to say, oh, this is an allegory about um, being a transsexual. So, yeah, you know, I heard that, but like at the same time, it's like, I mean, you can interpret the matrix a lot of different ways. I, I personally never got that out of it. I mean, I Infinity, never... It's, no, no, Infinity, it's, 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 it's not an allegory for being trans transsexual. It isn't. That's, yeah, that's, that's, just, that's what I said. That's I not, never got that out of it. It's not, it's not, the only it's argument not. I can see being there is that, like, well, you could be one way in the Matrix, and you could be one way. No, in no, the no, real no, because world. this is so. Because really, what Chaska was saying that basically the original idea for Switch was that Switch would be a man in the real world and a woman in the Matrix. Right. I think honestly, that's an interesting idea. Oh no, no, yeah, no, no, no. That, that that is interesting, but that's alone. Isn't an allegory for being a transsexual. No, no. Like the Matrix is no, about. I never got that out No, it's it's about to dis. It's about to discover. It's about look at the truth beyond what you have. A red pill, blue blue pill. Either choose to follow the truth or or or, or ignorance is bliss. Like cipher. Well, that's well, that is an allegory of being a, a trans, I believe, because well, like, no, no. Either, yeah, either you can it that way. Yeah, like, if, if, yeah, 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 exactly. No, 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 no. It's like you saying that it is specifically about transsexuality mm. of course it is an aspect of being transsexual being homosexual that is a part of discovery so of course it is part of it as as, as well but it isn't no this no this whole thing yeah. is about it, transsexuality it wasn't in your face kind of like no 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 yeah it wasn't as planned like a lot of movies are today no so so so, so my thing is that look where i'm with this whole matrix thing is um no bill pope Bill Pope is a cinematographer. Bill Pope just did um, Shang-Chi. So he's available, he's ready, he's around. He's not retired, he just did Shang-Chi, which, which I just watched like a week ago. Um, and also, yeah, Kim, Kim Barrett, the costume the designer was also on Shang-Chi as well. I think it was, was Shang-Chi, there's own also. Um, what should, what should, what should we call it? Um, Don Davis. I think the dude is still around. And that's where it now comes to the music. See, <laughs> what Nato has to realize is, you nobody is going to even think about making stars without john williams do not even think about making that thing about john williams no way like i've just listened to the hans Zimmer score for dune i don't know what Villeneuve is going to do in that film but that music is going to pretty much i believe that music is going to supersede the, the film damn i haven't listened to it yet 
Damn. Bro, he, he said what's up. He said what's up. He said, he said what's up. So are you, are you talking about the full thing or the sketchbook? The full thing. It came out to today. So like like the, the full thing came out to today. So um so my thing is um the music is very, very important. So what you have is the guy making the music is your friend. <laughs> like it's your friend. So you've not had the composer of Matrix, because John Davis is the composer of the Matrix, because his music is extremely unique. You've had your 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 mates to do the music. Like how unprofessional and messed up is that? So what this is, this is like a fan fiction kind of oh look. You can deal with grief however you want, and I think it is great that you're doing this to deal with grief because this is your creation and that's all cool. But the fact remains that okay, I can't take this seriously then. Because this now seems like a personal thing for you. This isn't an official that, oh, we actually have a proper idea of how to continue on the matrix. And this is just like, oh, I just want to go back to New York Trinity and I'll just cook, cook up a story with my mates and my friends about New York Trinity back in the matrix. The thing is, uh, this as well. So you can resurrect Trinity. You can resurrect Morpheus. What? And like what it's like what Lana say what you don't see because they try to ask her that oh. I'll fuck up. I'll fuck up. I'm gonna say something very simple. Okay. And this is something that you know I just thought I'll put it out there because it isn't really said, it's never been said, and a bit like somebody else, we're talking about people that get trapped in time. Mm. Rather, they get lost in time. Yeah. One of I would say, because there haven't been many, so maybe that's not even saying a lot. But in terms of ability, Lawrence Fishman is in the is in the top three black actors that has ever acted in Hollywood. One thousand percent. Lawrence Fishman is in one of, in in terms of ability, he's one of the top three. Yes. Now, in terms of Hollywood in general, Lawrence Fishman is one of the best actors that has come through Hollywood. The problem is that Lawrence Fishburne never had a shot because there was no space for Lawrence Fishburne. There was nothing for the guy to do. Now you have guys like Forrest Whitaker, who's very, very strong, very, very, very strong. But when Lawrence Fishburne gets going, his ability, his versatility, his dependability, his consistency, his versatility is quite crazy. And the most crazy thing about it is that it just it washes over over everybody's head because he doesn't really exist. But if you stop and think of every single film you've seen him in, as Othello, in Predator, in um, In Too Deep, in um, uh, what's that thing, King of New York, the one in, with um, what was his name, um, Christopher Walken? Yeah, King of New York. That's King it, of New York. It? Yeah. yeah King of, if you go through all the movies, and obviously, you know, everyone knows about Morpheus. But when they think of Morpheus, they just think, oh, Morpheus. They don't really actually stop and consider that Lawrence Fishburne did that thing. He did the Obi-Wan Kenobi thing. He did the Qui-Gon Jinn thing. He did the um, Sensei thing. He did the Pat Morita thing, Wax On, Wax Off thing. He did that role. How many people have done that role better than Lawrence Fishburne? And which one? For me, for me, it's more of a question to the public because is everyone? Uh, they're, 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 okay, fine. Okay, so tell me who has done the mentor role to the Luke Skywalker to the what you may call it better than Lawrence Fishburne did over that span of three films. No, no, there's there, no, no. See, there's never no one. See, I just wrote down in notes. There hasn't been one. My answer is no. But here's the thing: 
chosen one yeah has there been one menso menso role sorry you blacked out what's up no 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 so has, 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 has anybody done a mental role better than Lawrence Fishburne as a Morpheus in any film? I can't think of one on the spot. Um... Well, we have Mr. Miyagi, we have Obi-Wan Kenobi, we have Qui-Gon Jinn. Hmm. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't put. I mean, I mean, do you want to count Sean Connery in Highlander? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, no, I but, but that's the point. Half yeah. of, that's the point. Counting because you count. Yeah, it's like on one so, hand. You know, so you, when you go through all those guys who've all done those things, and those roles have been in and around the place, and you have to ask yourself that, okay, in all these roles, because, yeah, obviously, Guinness was a great actor and everything, but what did Guinness actually do as no. Obi-Wan Kenobi? No, no. no. <laughs> you know? Like, 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 no, like, like it's, it wasn't, it isn't what's, he, no, because see, here's because this is a point that I wanted to, to make. So, and this is, <laughs> you see, this is a joke, but it's not a joke. You know that Morpheus is actually the one. Well, half of, I, I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did tell you that many years ago. <laughs> because, because, see, because at a point, at a point, I asked that. Obviously, it was obviously it was a silly question, but. It got so bad that after like Reloda, I said that did he free himself? Like, did he just one day just go Rah! and just like wake up no, and no, pull the no, 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 yeah, that's, no, a good, no, that's a good point. No, 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 but see, on, like, like, like on a serious point though, is that it's about the importance of Morpheus. Because you see, Ken Reeves is a garbage actor. But what he is, is that he's obviously got adept at learning martial arts and he's got a very good movie face. Carrie-Anne Moss is a decent actress. She ain't great. She's decent. So you have a garbage <laughs> actor in Kenny <laughs> and you have a decent actress in Carrie-Anne Moss. With a good movie face. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's good movie face. No, um, Joe Pantoliano, quality actor, played a very, very important role as Cypher. But the foundation of that film, the guys hold that the guy holding also Hugo Weaving, very key, very good actor, a very key role as the antagonist. But the rock of the film is Morpheus. So why is the spotlight on the two weakest of the bunch that you just mentioned? Because and of what I just, because of what I just mentioned. There's there's something more controversial there, which is that you see, here's the thing, you know. Which and I, uh, I'm loath to say this because I love the Wachowskis for everything they did. I love them. I love them. I love them. And they broke so much ground. Re I mean, originally they wanted it to be Will Smith, and obviously they had Val Kilmer as most yeah. of the point. But they were looking at Will Smith and what's his name as um, whatever you call it. Um, um, yeah, Val Kilmer. No, Will Smith and Lawrence Fishburne at a point could have been Neo and, you know, whatever you call it, we know what's all they did with them, you know. They, they've done all that stuff, so racially they're very involved, you know. Mm. But it's, I think there's a point where you have to be able to, if, I think it's all, I mean, look, you know what? I don't even want to really go there. All I'll say is that, look, it's very, very curious that, because everything we've said about Lawrence Fishburne is a no-brainer. You know, it doesn't take Einstein to work this out. So it's almost like, do you resent the fact that people might think he's important, so you're trying to prove that he's not? I don't know, because, mm. you know, as I mentioned to Chosen One in a, in a show that we did like last week, it's like, it's almost like this Wachowski, you're trying to prove a point. You're trying to say that to for Matrix, I do not need the other Wachowski. I do not need Morpheus. I do not need Don Davis. I do not need an SFX pioneer like John Gator. I don't I don't need, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need. I'm like, you know what? That's what it sounds like. And then when you say, oh, it's about grieving, I'm like, let's call us, you know, let's get to the bottom line, man. That is extremely unprofessional. Like, 
excuse me, a film, a film that you expect people, because I presume you want this money to make more than just you and your friends. I presume you want humans to watch it, but you want to do turn a whole franchise into a personal grieving project. You know, I didn't, I didn't even know that until Have Hope mentioned it. So now that I do know that, I'm with Have Hope, and this, this is fan fiction. This doesn't count. It is incredible, man. This, this does not count at all. Yeah. No, 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 because see, you have to, you have to tread carefully, but you have to also be rea realistic. I, of course, you have to sympathize with, okay, your parents died and, you know, you know, grieving on this way, 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 way to do so. But you have to be realistic in, this is, this is how it was best. It wasn't best off of, you know, we've got a great idea of how to continue the Matrix. Because the, even when this was announced, the first thing I said is that Neo and Trinity are back. And you see, half of what, what gets me is that, Miss, Miss Wachowski, you must be very confused if you think you're going to run a Matrix story of the love between Neo and Trinity. <laughs> so because, because, give me a break. No, no, because the movie I saw wasn't Bridges of Madison County. No. That was not from a, what I saw was not Franco Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet. No. That was not that that was not the film I saw. The film I saw was an action sci-fi movie that chopped a bit of love in there to give it a bit of to give it some flavor. Yeah, because yeah, it's in a but when because when people think of the Matrix, do people really talk about man, Neon Trinity and the chemistry they had and so forth? No, no. What, what, what do you mean really? Nobody even it's not on any it don't even yeah, think about it. It's not mentioned. You don't even think about it. Like, because you're just like, oh god, okay, here we go, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah because, because you just have just through it. This is yeah. an action sci-fi. This is well, it's like no. Okay. What's interesting is that um they they had a lot more of that in the in the sequels, in terms of like developing their relationship a lot more. That's one thing that I noticed. Okay, so tell okay when you say they developed the relationship a lot more, what exactly was developed? Like what did we see about this love? Like they they we he kept saying that he loves her so much. And they kept saying, yes, we love you so much. But in terms of the mechanics of constructing a story about a relationship, what exactly existed in that film? Because I saw a lot of flying, a lot of Chateau and Merovingian. And then every so often we'll get, oh, Persephone wants to kiss Neo. Oh, why don't you sample this? Oh, OK, um, he, um, she's, she's about to fall out of the building. He, he flies and saves her and pulls a bullet out of her body. Oh, OK, architect, you can go into this door or that door. No, I'm going to that door, mate, because I really love Trinity. Okay, fine. We've seen these things. These are things we have seen. But how is that woven into the fabric of the film where we can come away and go, wow, that was really an epic tale about love. Wow. Yeah, what it's, you it's, uh, it's not. It's all, surface, it's all surface level. You just, you just so, see more of it. Yeah. It's like it's so – I'm like, you're, you're now going to try to twist the Matrix. It's, and let's, and listen, what should I ask you? Oh, my God. Name one movie you've made that's a that's a, a film film. You've done Bound. You've done Swordfish. You've done name the any movie. Oh God! No, Listen. no, 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 And I no, but that's a great point. Is that this film was birthed off of somebody wanting to feel better because Neo and Trinity made them feel better. That's the I mean, point. It is that's it so. Is. That is, see, see, that was the jumping off point. You have to understand, the jumping off point was, I'm feeling sad and depressed because of what's happened in my life. I'm thinking about Neo and Trinity put a smile on my face. That was the jumping off point. And then it's like, what, how can we cook up a story that can bring back Neo Look, and Trinity? I mentioned but the issue is that, why are Neo and Trinity even back? They shouldn't be back. I mentioned to Chosen, based on the technicality of a film, if they are trying to bring Neo back, Neo cannot be back in the first half of the film. Based on the way a movie is set up and, oh, they, you know, discovering, peel, this, he's not going to be back before the first half of the film is done. The earliest you're going to see him is probably after the first half of the film, the first, you know, three-fifths of you're the talk, film. You're talking about the way that they've done it. Yeah, the way, they, look, okay. the way they've done it, to like, how else, he cannot come back with it in first, first, and at any point that he returns, that's when your continuation from revolutions begins. Now, before he returns, you're going to spend at least five minutes, sorry, at least half the film, 
So talk about it. you're going to spend at least an hour, at least an hour of this film, watching Thomas Anderson do what it took you half an hour to do in the first Matrix. I agree. That, yep. That's, so that's so, so you're, you're going to spend all this time with him going, "Wow, wow, believe, believe." But we we flipping well did this in oh. The first film. Because I agree, because when that shot where he grabs Trinity and, and they jump off, yeah, there, there's no way that happens before the hour mark. Impossible. <laughs> yeah. No way. You know, yeah, it, it, you know, otherwise you've got a really crazy, a really crap film. Yeah. Because yeah. that is a significant beat in the yeah. film. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you've got a situation where you've compromised at least one hour of your, of your movie because you're going to spend an hour doing what we've, we've already seen before. Yep. So we are not looking at it going, wow, nobody's going, how exciting, what discovery. No, you're going to make Neo learn about his powers again. Mm -hmm. And you're going to make him do stopping bullets again. No, no, but, gonna... but, but, do you know what? Um, I mean, it's, it's, ridiculous. it's ridiculous. If you see the trailer, there's a point where you can see the first Matrix being watched on like a cinema screen. Yeah. And yeah, I'm like, I that. Sorry, are you what? trying to be like really basically? Are you trying to be like a Cohen? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Sorry, what? Go and look at the trailer again. In the trailer, you can see, and it's very, very quick. You can see, yeah. You know, like you know how you go to those outdoor cinema screens where there's this massive cinema screen thing, and there's like an image from the first Matrix. So it's almost as if somebody is watching like a movie and watching the Matrix on the cinema screen. Yeah, it's a scene where like Neo is first going into the Matrix, and like the uh, the the silver like stuff is like crawling into his mouth. Oh, I thought that was actually part of the actual film. <laughs> okay, no, no, so no, 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 but you can see that because you can see that it's like a it's like a cinema screen. Because if you if you pause it, you can see it's like a cinema screen. And also, you have uh, the, the you have the, the guy that says, "Or oh, you won't return back to the Matrix." Yeah, but see, that. see that scene makes no sense because who is he talking to? Yeah, it's like, like I'm like because. That scene makes no sense. But this is why I'm, I'm, I'm like, are you now doing a whole... Because I've, I've heard some very scary things about this film. So, uh, question. And because because end, I've heard some very scary things about this film scripts that I pray is not true. So, question. At the end of Revolutions, when the mm -hmm. architect says to the Oracle, those who want to be released will be released, does mm -hmm. that mean people are aware of the, what the Matrix is? No, come on. Basically, like like uh, cipher, whatever you call it. If you go back in, you forget everything. You know, whatever. Okay, and perfect. Otherwise, you you, you explode. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. Oh, oh, okay, okay, so, I, so okay, so, okay. So my next question, I guess, I got the answer from Poh the other day. But have hope and infinity's limit. What would you guys have done? I'm curious because I actually have to dip out in a bit. But what would you mm. guys have done? In a new Matrix film, if it were up to you, what what direction would you have gone in, both of you? Infinity, you can go. First. It's a tough one, man, because like the way that Revolutions ended was kind of like it just seemed like it was over, you know. So I don't really know, like, where would you like, where where can you even really go with it? Um, I mean, what they're doing, what what apparently it seems like what they're trying to do is trying to go kind of meta with it and kind of like almost it seems like they restarted the matrix from whatever you know original because i remember like at the end of the movie wasn't like um the matrix in the real world were kind of like overlapping wasn't it and then the revolutions hmm. so one of the big thing though is this is that do you know how i thought it was gonna end was have you heard of the matrix within a matrix theory Yes. Yeah, everyone thought that after revolution. As in, because the whole idea is, because that is the, that is, that is what the ending makes sense is that let us create a scenario where they believe they are free and then therefore they'll never question. And we create this scenario of they always have to have this strife. So you have at the end of rare revolutions where we believe we are free and, and so forth. So how you now go through is people discovering this is another level of the matrix. And I make people aware that, oh, no, no, this whole real world that we're in is, and now it's about finding out and what the real, 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 real world is. I think that this Wachowski 
is going to go there because at the day i'm going to say how was a man able to stop sentinels in the new in the real world how yeah. because neo stop was stopping sentinels. so i think ultimately maybe they stuck stuff like that in there because they wanted to play with this idea on some level i think that if they've got people looking at watching matrix films in their movie that's what they're going to try to do but they've got a problem and the reason why they've got a problem is because if neo is exists as a movie star the man called Thomas Anderson won't recognize his face. Um, if that film, as you're saying, is being pl played as a movie in this world, yeah. the guy called Thomas Anderson won't say, why am I in a film? <laughs> maybe he's a program. Maybe Thomas Anderson is like a program that just does, does, doesn't... I mean, yeah, but still it's like yeah, you're, you're, you're seeing yourself in the... Yeah, I mean, come on. You see, it doesn't work. See, so I don't know whether that they're watching a film. But one thing is that that guy saying back to wow, all the way back to the mate, that makes no sense because yeah. who is he talking to? And who could he be talking to where he has a conception of back to the, and he has a conception of anything like the matrix? It makes no sense. So listen, let me tell you something that's quite worrying. From talking more and more about, because it's so, do you know what a beast? See, the Matrix is almost like Darth Vader. It took a man, it took a voice, it mm. took a suit, it took a the, the Matrix took all these beasts of people, two Wachowskis, Morpheus, you know, um, Gator, Don. It took all these beasts to create it. One human being, one human who is grieving over the loss of their parents thinks they can compensate for all of they're gonna be potholes, man. They're gonna be potholes. Oh, no, 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 they have to be like like you know. I don't think Lennon Wachowski appreciates what the Matrix is. And half of, I think that the core of the core, and the same with John Lucas and Star Wars, the core of the problem is what you just said. That person doesn't actually respect Matrix. Oh, no, no. Like, like I don't think you actually know, because if you really appreciated it and so forth, you wouldn't just get, I'm sorry, guys from the road to now yeah. write and be the composer, because... No, Bill Pope has to be the cinematographer because the look of the Matrix is very important. Now, if you want to update it, fine, but you update it with Bill Pope because there's just a look. The look of the film is very important, you know, because the the first thing that I saw, I was like, no, this doesn't look like like like, like the Matrix. And even if you want to update it, even if even if it's updated, this just seems so removed from what a Matrix film should feel like. A certain feel that it should have. So you're like, okay, this just because the color just seemed very cold, very no, it's it's visually still looks good, but it's like eh, something just, just feels very off. And like I think there's a, a, a point that um some guys made on YouTube is that this is the matrix running on walls, tilting the, the camera in a post MCU world and so forth, you've got to come up come up with something a little bit more. To get people excited. Listen, go and go and listen to my chat. I don't know whether he ever posted, whether Chosen ever posted it. All all these points were covered in our chat, you know. And it's like, you know, um, we know we know what needs to be done. We know that they haven't done it. And, and the point I'm making is that even if she she tried, she's not she can't match. One human cannot match the level. And the problem we have, which um, um, Alex posted in something else, where he said he saw Neil's eyes closed, being sealed shut, like from revolutions, mm. means your movie is continuing from revolutions. And somehow he went back into, he got plugged back in. That guy from revolutions got plugged back in. Mm. Now you've got a problem, Lano, um, Lily Lano Wachowski. And the problem you've got now is that, do you know the responsibility it is to be continuing from revolutions? Do you realize that you can literally now in one movie completely just obliterate the whole legacy of matrix Wait, because how, how did because you, you are you are continuing from revolutions that's mm -hmm. what you're doing and anything you do from now is now going to shed a, a new light on revolutions on reloaded and the matrix one so you could end up doing something that says nothing matters you could end up doing something that says oh this is what the matrix is but you are here to you have to give us basically there has to be a big revelation in this film otherwise there's no point in the movie existing 
is it your it's a bit selfish for her to think she is the one to do that but the fact is that for this movie to exist there has to be one big boom it's well, no, I, I, I mean i mean I, the, the, I mean in the conversation now ken reeves is ken reeves so we can't really take his word for it but language which ask that's all oh, ken reeves said that once he read the script he was like Oh, oh, wow, 20, like you know, 20 years, yeah, 20 years ago, you did, yeah, this yeah like, like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. what about, about what's gonna happen to it. And my thing is, okay, look, Ken Reeves is just, I, I don't, he's just some guy, but Whoa. I think, <laughs> I think the, the, the overarching thing is the the level of disrespect towards Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne is something that I can't come to terms with. Half of my thing is, I reject the film, I reject it, yeah, like, I, I'm like, for me, this isn't like, for me, this film doesn't exist. This film is not a it's a, it's an indie movie it's an indie film because my thing is it is disrespectful I'll call it slightly racist to cast I didn't want to go there I, I didn't want to go there Well okay well I'll call it racist <laughs> to cast Yaya Abdul Mateen in a role of Morpheus to the extent where you go to his Instagram and he and he just says like let me even share this with you like the fact that he's even calling himself Morpheus and everything I'm like this is beyond disrespectful. Yeah, man. Like, if if you're not if you can't get Fishburne, just don't just don't put Morpheus in the movie. Like at all. I mean, look at this. Morpheus. So hashtag, the Matrix he, movie. So he yeah. is playing the character. Bro, he's look, look he, he posted it. Yes, look. it's confirmed. Wow. I just I don't. Wow. I don't. Wow. So, so Morpheus is just something you can just, yeah, hey man, I'm the new Morpheus. Oh, cool man, cool fire emoji. Yeah, man, yeah, you're gonna kill that man, yeah. Yeah, but these are all idiots, so come on. Yep. No, 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 but, but my point is, <sighs> look at what Lawrence Fishburne did for that role. Look at, because it's a funny thing of like how, I think even you fans of Morpheus was even saying that, like, even the just guys who are not really into this whole thing they're like wait a minute wait where's Lawrence fishbone because it's an because his impact was so profound that guys are like to this day people are still saying oh he's definitely going to be in the film they even I, went I to that. and said that oh what if, what if tomorrow the war could be over isn't that what fighting for isn't that worth dying for oh you think you can bring a film without that man in it nope you can't do it, man. <laughs> what on earth is Isn't that? that worth fighting for? Isn't that worth dying for? I never heard Leo speak like that. <laughs> no, like, you see, How? that's why, basically, that's why Revolutions was, was a, a mess. Because in and, part of and, and you realize that when Morpheus talks, he's never looking at anybody. He's looking somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, but Lawrence Fishburne even said it himself that he said that when he read the script, he realized that no, Morpheus is 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 mad. Really? That's what he said. So he said, no, no, this guy, he's crazy. He's he's mad. So he is playing it as a guy that is actually mad and psychotic. <laughs> so when you realize that how chilled and level-headed is, but you know that the actor playing this in a level-headed way actually believes the, the character is a psycho, it just shows you the levels you're dealing with. And that kind of character, you can't mess with that character. It's like, no, listen, that's why it's great because it's like, again, it goes back to the point you said, you think your film can live off me one Trinity? I said, it's a weird no, 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 Because my thing is that, okay, fine. You're really good mates with Keanu and Karen Moss and everything. That's irresponsible. That's unprofessional. Have, have, have hope, Don Cheadle, Terrence Howard, Yaya Abdul, um, uh, it's and that's why I didn't really want to go there. It's like there's a certain lack of value, yes, or respect you have for to think you can replace Terence Howard with John Tido, <laughs> to think you can replace <laughs> a no, man. No, 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 no. See, see, that is bad. This is worse. Oh no, of course, no, see, 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 that's a different kind of comedic criticism. This is this is like like real it's like okay here, here, okay here's the thing and have here's the key and this is why i think there's something else going on here if you want 
to bring out a film without Lawrence Fishburne, and you respect what he did, you value him. And different directors do this with different, they did it with um, um, Robert Duvall, with um, Godfather 3, whatever. Like, it's like, you call him and talk to Lawrence and say, listen, you know, we're going this direction and yada, 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 and mm -hmm. here's why we feel we have to do this. Lawrence Fishburne cannot come out in the media and say he does not know why. Oh, he I mean, see, see, Chris, that's and, always when I said, that's when I just said, you know what, I'm done. I'm and, done. And say that he's, he's been, obviously, we know that agents Smith actually said that like, he actually begged, not begged, but said, listen, I've got things to do, but I want to be in it. And they said, no, but that's agent Smith. We can live without him. Fishburne says he doesn't know what's going on, and he wishes them all the best of luck, but he doesn't know what's going on. How, and first of all, you have to make it right with Lawrence Fishburne. And secondly, you have to make it right with the fans. You say, hey guys, obviously, you know, you know, Lawrence or not, because you know, this is you have to show that level of appreciation for the most important character in your franchise. And I know this, this goes to the point though, and which is why this is scary. So either you're living under a rock or you it's 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 two things. Either you somehow don't realize that he's your most important character, or you don't, or you don't want to realize. realize you don't want to realize because nobody's that realize. stupid. Nobody's that stupid. Nobody. And it's like, the fact that you don't have the courtesy to call him and talk to him about not being in the film, I find that very suspect. Which is why I'm not sure there's basically the yeah, project... Some, yeah, something else is going on there. Yeah, the, this project whiffs of there, there might be friction between people. People may not like where people... May, maybe yep. people have, have made transphobic or homophobic comments that we don't know about, that they know about. There's something, something else. Something, here, something has happened. Something you know, has happened. going on here, yeah. and it's yeah. um, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's like fair enough, but they have to realize that their feet are going to be held to the fire for it, and there is no way they're going to live up to what they. You know, basically, have hope. It cannot work. It, it can't, can't, work. can't work. It can't work. I mean, like, and I also see. I I feel sorry for Yaya Abdul because you've been put in a horrible situation. You're not that great an actor to begin with, and you're being put in one of the most iconic roles. Listen, people are saying, people are saying, oh, I wonder if he's Morpheus. Has anybody watched the trailer and heard how he's trying to talk? Like, there is no debate. He's trying to put on a Lawrence Fishburne voice, but he's so he's so bad, he can't do it well. And then, do you know how do you know how messed up that is? A Lawrence Fishburne is fully alive, fully well, and I've got a dude trying to mimic Morpheus. I mean, what the hell? No, no way. Oh, and, and, and even, and listen, here's the thing. We all know that the kind of film you're making, there is no reason why Fishburne and this guy can, can't, can't be in the same film. This guy could still be a young Morpheus. And at some point, we see what the real Morpheus is doing, wherever the heck he is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, oh, it, man, it man I was hoping to do, do something like that because I was talking to Have Hope about this, and I was like, man, he cannot not be in it. Like, he has to be in it in some capacity. And but, I'm like, damn. But why? He, yeah, okay, I just don't. But why Why bring in a young Morpheus, though? Why? And why not? Why aren't we seeing a young Trinity and then a young Neo? You know, it's, 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 it's my, my, my argument, and this, and it's a second argument because. Look, my argument is okay. We want Morpheus. But see, okay, my their angle could be: we want a Morpheus to do martial arts, physical, and so forth. Do we believe that Lawrence Fishburne can still do these very physical martial arts things at his oh, age? Come on! Right. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. So, if that's your thing, first of all, I saw him with a photo with Spike Lee. He's still looking in trim shape, and if you respected. Morpheus enough. Does Morpheus need to do crazy martial arts or so forth? Because mm -hmm. the character is so important. Does he have to do you so think so he you, you, creatively you really that think you another Morpheus doing another action scene? You really think Karen Moss is gonna be doing any action? Give me a break. Okay, <laughs> give me a break. Yes, obviously Keanu because he's he's bloody doing John Wick these days, but you really think you really think Karen Moss or, or um Niobe um uh, like my God, what is Jada Pinkett doing? I mean, it's so bizarre. Yeah, it's, 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 it's it's strange. This it's, is very it's, strange. It's, it's, I mean, like, no, no, no. Basically, I do feel that something happened. There's definitely because this is this isn't a professional project. 
This is no. a personal project. Yeah. So this yeah. is about who am I friends with? Let's come on board. So am, I, so am I still friends with, with, with Bill Pope now? Am I still friends with Don Davis now? Okay, who am I my friends? Hence why this this, this project is nonsense. This is irresponsible. Really not. This is irresponsible. I, I don't no, care. It's, it's not, it's, but that's what I told you. Like, this doesn't mean anything to me. Nothing. Yeah. Like, I completely reject it because based on how it's been <laughs> conceived and the disrespect towards key components of it, because my thing is that... Like, all I would say is that... What Matrix is? All, all I would say is that in... You're lucky because you're not going to go through what I went through with Star Wars. Because at the end of the day, you're not, you haven't got a, a psychopathic, b b uh, uh, called Kathleen Kennedy at the helm who is trying to completely rape and distort everything about it's not like, okay, she, she's going to bring me uh, Morpheus back to get beaten up by some three-year-old girl and, and and lose every fight and then have his comeback and look like a hobo. Okay, he's not in it. So you're not gonna get that happen to Matrix, but in a very light version, you're about to watch a very grim thing. <laughs> Basically. The, the, the issue is so, that a part of me doesn't want to watch this based off the disrespect, but I am extremely curious just to see what, what story did you actually cook -co on? Like what? What did you actually like? What was the idea? It seems idea? it seems really crazy. Like based on what I've seen in that trailer, like I can't even follow what's happening. Look, Chosen made a brilliant point, which is that what's the best case scenario? You make a good film. That's not good enough. <laughs> yep. Like, what's the best case scenario? You make this kind of indie, smallish movie that talks about you know because this is the movie which I said. That everybody can remember that when Reloaded came out, it splits people. You guys are like, well, what was all this action? We thought it was going to be about life and philosophy and whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. So you're now making the, a movie now that probably should have been your part two, because you've you've gone too far with Revolutions and Reloaded. You, mm -hmm. It's a bit like that issue they had with Chronicles of, of Riddick. You yeah. guys went went too far. So mm -hmm. if you know you don't have the chops, you don't have the balls to actually capitalize, because I loved Chronicles of Riddick, the ending yeah. and the world that I did. But you Good guys, movie. you guys are all so stupid that you didn't know how to capitalize on that, so you reverted all the way back, and, and that is what's going to happen here. Where it's like, it's such an anti-climax. You can't go to revolutions and men in metal and, and the machines and Noribun Mufuni and all these guys, and you now decide you're going to do some small movie about life and reality. Yeah, yeah it's no, weird. No, no. It's like you're going back to like, square one almost. You know, you know, you know, because the issue is that, and, and so just very quick, I know that. The whole thing about Matrix One was that the Matrix was mysterious. It was mystery. Like, what is the? the that was the hashtag. What yeah. is the Matrix? What? But things that you, for better or for worse, you showed us what it was in Part Two. You you went full on. You said, "This is what it is. Here's where they are. This is reality." So the only thing you can do now in Revolutions is say it's fake. You can't come back in a Part Four twenty years later to say it's fake. That's you know, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. It's too far. If the Matrix was fake, you've got to. That is your big clangor at the end of Revolutions, and then we are waiting 10, 20 years for the next continuation. But you didn't because you 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 actually copped out. You didn't go that far. So you're not going to now come now because if you tell us now that the, that Zion is fake, nobody cares. Like you can come out now in this your tiny little movie. We watch an hour and a half of Neo saying how much he loves Trinity and how oh my god, there's just something about you. Oh, you're going to spend about an hour doing something about you, and yeah. then we and then and then we 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 discover things and we we jump off a building and we and what is going to happen then? Now we're going to start to continue from revolutions, Maybe. and when we continue from revolutions, just what the heck? Because it's it's A or B. It's A or B. Either you're going to show us that revolution, that all that is fake, and in which case I'm like nobody cares. But because that, if you're, yeah. you're going to show us, if you're going to show us that everything is fake, you need to show us everything is fake in the most extraordinary way. It needs to be the most bombastic matrix way to show us how how things are on the next level. It because better, but it better be something after Inception and after all of these things. Exactly. It better be something crazy, and I doubt. No way. That level. Okay, so okay, that's, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, okay, so that's choice number one. Choice number two is that no, everything is real. So um Neo, but they're trying to wake Neo up 
why mm-hmm. why and what broke the peace because yeah like what, yeah you yeah. know and and if they broke the peace is that world we saw in revolutions do we care about what's going on in that world so you know we're going to see more of these guys in their raggy clothes you know walking around in zion i i look <laughs> I, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I think have hope's point at the very beginning of this it, it crystallizes everything i think how about this this thing is now it exists now for all the wrong reasons your motivations behind creating this were perverse and the final it's like it filtered all the way down to the final product i i just i just personally especially after talking with you guys here tonight i don't see it ending well i don't see any scenario where i walk out of that theater and say i'm glad they brought this back it can only go in the reverse more i don't know probably because it's a chosen one the issue here is that you see matrix is like star wars in the sense of when something is so very specific it can only be done by the creators same thing over same thing with terminator as 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 well see people think that oh terminator anyone can just go ahead and do it is that what you say from terminator is no cameron has to be involved star wars lucas doesn't need to direct or write he needs to be involved matrix the what the wachowskis plural the wachowskis need to be involved but the issue why matrix is dead and finished is they have become different people i agree so and i think look it's for me i think it's amazing how they've been able to discover themselves and now live their truth and they're happy right now but meant like when you do something creative how you are mentally psychologically is extremely important very it is very important indeed those Wachowskis that I saw being interviewed for the first Matrix are totally different people than who we have now. You know, Phantom Pope made a very great, great point um, about the Red Hot Chili Peppers, where he said that when they were on drugs, they made their best music. And when they were fully sober and so forth, the music is still good. It's not as, as good as when they were on drugs, blood sugar, sex, magic, and all that stuff. So my thing is... Minute, one, one, one hot minute, and, yeah, yeah, and, 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 and that's why that that punk John Frusciante, who spends all his time screaming with the band, that's why he can't listen to the, he can't listen to the album because he knows he knows that Dave Navarro stepped in and he stepped up, and those guys were high as kites. So the the Wachowskis, the Wachowskis, end of the day, it is that that conflict in their bodies that made them create that create that psychotic yes. Frankenstein called yeah. matrix because they they were battling in their brains they were battling in their bodies and the of oh, and the feeling you get from the matrix is war Every, yeah. everybody is fighting something they're trying to fight mm. they're trying to fight reality they're trying to fight the imp- imposition of the outside world's expectations on them mm-hmm. they're fighting they're fighting they're fighting once you're happy matrix in a happy movie Matrix isn't a happy world. Matrix yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's complex. It's com- at odds. It's haphazard. It's basically when you just to look at, because if because I remember because I watched every single thing about Matrix. Every I watched every single thing because I was obsessed, and I just remember their body language because remember they, they hardly got interviewed because they hardly talked because they were very private. And obviously we now, now know why. Yeah, we obviously know. But when you could see them interview, you just felt like, yeah, these guys. Even the way they, they talked and so forth, it was like these guys didn't really just that uh, they are dealing with a lot of stuff internally. Listen, but we're not now. Oh, they will talk. I had infinitum here, crack jokes, super happy, and everything. I always say that like good. I yeah. always say that that pain makes pain makes the best art, man. Yes. And as and that sounds messed up, but that's just how that's just the unfortunate sad truth. When you're in conflict and when you're in pain and so forth. That's where the best art comes out. And when you're in a happy, good place, you don't make the best art. It sounds messed up. <laughs> it sounds messed up. But the truly the best art are from artists who are dealing with a lot of stuff internally. And that's just the reality. So that's the film that we see here. Not all the I'm time, sure. but but not all the time. Let's just put that qualifier out there. No, not no, 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 Chosen, no, no, chosen, no, no, chosen, no, no. chosen, chosen. So name the greatest 
works of art you've seen and think of the people that delivered them. Think of them. Let me show you. Sorry. Um, because I'm trying to find. I mean, very, okay, no, I no, keep on. I just want to be very clear. I, I, most of the time, yes, that is a great motive. Look, I, I just think sometimes, how about this? It depends. The motivation is very important. And I agree with that sentiment that pain, you know, Lenny Kravitz, when he made his hit, we can go to music, film. Um, literal artistry, like painting, I agree. But what I'm saying is, not every, not every time. Sometimes it, it doesn't end well. No, no, well, no, no. Okay, no, okay, no, okay no, it's a, it's almost like a statistic. You might say not every time. I'm saying like almost 99 percent of the time. You know, I wouldn't go that high, but yes. Well, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But, but, but chosen one sec. Okay, if you think about it now. Okay, let's just off the top of my head, Seminator. James Cameron has always talked about how he always has a chip on his shoulder and how he still hates all the guys that sort of bullied him and so forth. And he still has a, a chip on his shoulder. Francis Ford Coppola, they were trying to um, sack him off of the set of the whole thing because they didn't want to pay Pacino. And the guy was pretty much crying and so forth during the whole making of um, that thing that he did. Um, Star Wars, George Lu Lucas, the guy was going through so many issues and so forth through the whole thing because guys are like, wait, what's this whole style thing that that's happening? Can you, can you guys see it? Can you see this? See what? I'm trying to share. share oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So we can see these two lads. <laughs> now. Damn. It's all now, okay. So we're going about, about in terms of like, um, the only thing I'll say to Chosen One is that we all know what every single piece of work that Steven Spielberg made is made because he's who he is. Mm. Every single piece of work that George Lucas made is made because he's who he is. Yes. Do you look at these two people and think that they were happy kids? Mm. <laughs> and secondly, do you, these two people, what do you think Daisy Ridley will do if she saw them in the corridor at university? Look at, the, look, at, look at the girl on the right hand side. You think she'll give him some <laughs> phone number? <laughs> So, think what you will, man. Reality, yeah, no, no. reality is reality. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I just feel that, look. And it sounds messed up, but this film, because when I just look at Lana Wachowski and everything, I'm so happy that she's in a good place and a happy place and so forth. When I just look at how this product has come across, it's extremely insulting to what The Matrix is. So, hence why I said to myself that, because I always thought, that, oh, man, like, I always thought that, man, the excitement I'd, I'd feel of just seeing that green coat and Matrix come back and so forth. It wasn't there, wasn't there, wasn't there. No, it, no, it wasn't. And my thing is, oh, like, Revolution, it's, it's over. It's because of how they're now transitioning into women now, and they're now totally in a different place psychologically. Half of it, it, it's, it's, it's finished, it's done. What I told Chosen One, all you needed to do for the, the trailer for Matrix is you just show the green coat and you call Lawrence Fishburne and say, Lawrence, you just have to say that what we thought is not real. Oh yeah, and that's it. We that's need, it. we we need, we need to wake him up. That's it. That that is your teaser with the green cold, and you're sorted. Well, the story is not over. We have to wake him up. That's and it. I always knew his. I'm with you. My, I remember years ago, I said to myself that I'm, I'm watching a, a movie, Randall, like that, and out of nowhere, screen goes black. And you just suddenly sort of start hearing, you just start seeing the green could have like, no way, no way. And then you hear, that is how Matrix Damn. returns. Yeah. That's the, the teaser. Green code, voiceover, boom, we're out. No, that's, no, that's no, so no, iconic no. too, man. When you hear that, that's, uh, Matrix has such a specific sound to it, man. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's like, that's because, see, this goes back to how, you see, you had to watch the interview, guys. Because when you watch the interview, it's as if you're watching guys who are smarter than smart. <laughs> it's like a bunch of scholars who are maybe too smart for their own good. That's why I just, that's why I just, I said, look, man, I can't take any more of this. I just, I just, I just, I just, I just pressed stop and just exited the whole video. And I said, look, I, I, nah, no, no. You know, be, because my thing is, you see, 
Matrix, those Wachowskis that made the Matrix, an important part was on the action. As well as the philosophy, but also we want to make this cool. This Wachowskis I'm looking at right now, I don't think action is that much of a big deal. See, did any of you watch Sense 8? I haven't seen it. Any of you guys? No. no. Chosen one Sense Sense 8? No, I have not. You see, watching Sense 8 gives you a very clear idea of where they are right now, mentally, psychologically. And you see, Sense 8 still has some pretty good action in it. And because you have those sensibilities, you'll always be able to bring that in there. But because you are such in a different way mentally, that the matrix you're going to produce is just going to be... And the key thing is, if your jump off point is Neo and Trinity, that is a horrendous jumping off point to, to start off with. Like, if you're the, the crux of a thriller is the love of Neo and Trinity, that's garbage. <laughs> you know? That's garbage, you know? Um, well, guys, I got to run. Good talk. Um, I don't know. Trailer two. Oh, 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 yeah. I, I just saw this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I saw this as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Watch, I'm sorry. Watch, watch, watch that video and look at Carrie and Moss's face. But anyway. Exactly. It's like a busy one. Okay, I'll... We will see you soon, bro. Thank, thank you. Thank you, bro. All right, yeah. children. Yeah. Peace, peace, peace. And they're so happy. They are really happy. They're happy. They're happy. That's and that's the twist is that they are so happy, so they don't care what you think. They don't care yeah. why. And that's a very scary place. No, it's, <laughs> that's a, it's a horror because once you have a set where it's just me and my mates, <laughs> and as she says that, it feels so good to be making a movie with all of my with, with my closest friends. It's a mess. And that's mess, it's it's mess, mess. What, mess. what you learn is you will now realize that why Matrix is so. See, guys can ask a bit, oh, it's amazing and so forth. Because see, here's the scary, this is the scary scenario. I think this film is going to come out. I think this film is going to have, going to have good reviews. People will actually like probably, the film. Probably, yeah. Probably. yeah no, because, people will like the film. And they'll say it's better than me. No, but like, I can almost, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick a bet with you guys. Now, I won't. General consensus will be this isn't as good as the first Matrix. This is better I, than Reloaded and Revolution. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty safe bet. That's, of course, what is going to happen is that they're going to go that Matrix has finally come back. As, this is what I said to you before. I said to you that this is going to be the movie that everybody was wanted from yeah. instead of Reloaded. And, and they're going to go there, oh, it's finally come back to, you know, even though it's not really, but just no. because it's so different and so talking about reality and deep listening, they'll be like, oh, you know, it's finally found itself after, you know, being derailed for those two movies and they finally come back and everybody will jump up and say, yeah, yeah, of course, no, come on, that's standard. That's for that, that's standard these days. And it's like, you know, um, oh, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I mean, look, half of what I said, just get ready. Prepare yourself, because it's um, it's not going to be. No, 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 no. But I was, I was saying to um, Infinity Man is like, a part of me doesn't want to watch this this film, but curiosity is a very, very, very strong emotion. Like a part no, of me is like, based on just the disrespect of Lawrence Fishburne and just how this has come about with like no Don Davis, no John Gator. I'm like, that's a lot, man. It's a lot. It's too much. It's it's like I mean it's like because that's what it goes back to the, like that's why it's very see the creator isn't the audience member. So sometimes the creator doesn't realize what George Lucas and Star Wars. Lucas as the creator, he doesn't know what Star Wars is. So he's like, yeah, look, Star Wars. I'm gonna just do this thing, blah 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 blah. But you can't be like, no, no, no. Do you actually know what this is and how this should should work? So in Lana's mind is that. Morpheus ain't the most important character. I don't care what. No, they're not. No, it's not the most important character. Yeah. It's a character that, that we created, but it's not the most important character here. And everyone kind of they always feel that way. That's like you know you can't tell me what is more important. Yeah. Whatever you call it, I'm the one. That I'm, made the, it. I'm the creator. 
you know, and it's like, guys, sometimes that's what it means when you've created something that, you know, it's, it's, it goes beyond you, you know, it, it's, um, you know, so it might be hard to accept, but that's how it goes, you know? I mean, it's, 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 oh, God. Uh, I'm not, I mean, look, it's, um, it's not this, it's, it just shows you that, like, films are just it's 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 finished because we all know what's going to happen with dune i know exactly what that film is is is, is gonna is gonna be lady lady jessica <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> Crazy. listen just listen to the soundtrack hans he he did the best that, that he, he could is that even... was, sorry yeah you know because i've seen you know the things i've seen in the trailer and i was telling this to chosen on where it's like there are actors who i know First of all, you have to sack Jason Momoa because that guy is taking <laughs> the guy's taking a piss. In terms of like um, other actors, I know that you guys are better actors than this. And if you guys were acting with Ridley Scott, he'd tell you that, guys, no, because these guys they're doing things. I'm like, that's just a silly, a silly acting choice. That's just a silly decision. Like, why have you chosen to deliver the line like this? Why have you chosen to go with mm -hmm. this? You know, so. And things that that's see that's the subtlety of a master versus a guy who's just very good. Denny is just very good. He's not when you're a master of movie making, you understand that Denny, you you might direct a great film, but you also have to direct great actors. Mm. You have to direct you have to direct great actors greatly. And I'm looking at him who you obviously don't have that higher level of understanding that guys. Here's the deal. These are the stakes, and this is what you have to be doing. Now, let me. Okay, one thing I'll say now is okay. Um, Isaac, Oscar, Oscar Isaac, right? Yeah. This is a very good actor. Yeah, we, we yeah. all know he's a good actor. Yeah, he's good. But who would cast him as Leto, like a master of a house? House yeah, and tree. It's no, no, it's it's weird, and and, and especially when you read the book yeah it's like yeah. I'm, I'm sorry there's such a thing as you know casting by type hmm. how do you see oscar isaac and think yes that is the guy in charge but, of but, 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 you know um brendan gleason yeah that's the kind of guy that's a king leader of a house yeah yeah it's like i mean it's, it's just like basically i'm baffled because when i see oscar isaac in the film and he's walking about i'm like I don't really buy this, man. No, no, no. And you know, no disrespect to Oscar Isaac, but mates, you just don't evoke that. No, 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 because like, that's what they always say, like in auditions and so forth. It's like you can make the best audition and so forth. It's not about your acting skill. It's just what you look like. <laughs> it's like you know? okay, so then Harrison Ford. I would say no. Harrison Ford cannot evoke the leader, the the, the Duke of a, of of a of a monarchy or the mm. the, the picture. Harrison Ford does not evoke that. No. Um, what's his name? Sean Connery. Yes, he evokes that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's just, and these are two very similar kinds of, you know, people or actors or yeah. leading men. But one guy does, one guy doesn't. So the other day is like, you know, um, you, the, it, it's it's strange. It's strange. And I, and I think that would come from the fact that Denis Villeneuve, he doesn't really get it. He's just very, his guys are very, very talented and he's very good. He's very professional. But you don't really get it because I'm seeing things in the like the obvious one is that what Jason Momoa is doing is is scandalous. This guy is is acting in an epic like he is playing basketball. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's basically he's like he has one move and that's the only move that you're gonna get. So basically, you basically at least you get what he paid for. Basically, it does exactly what it says on the table. All, all that man knows how to do is look at the camera. That's what he does. And, 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 and how to be hip. Yeah, and, 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 cool. he's, and he's very good at looking at the camera. That's all, that's all he knows how to do. But the guy cannot do anything else. He cannot fight, he cannot act, he cannot crack jokes. The guy is not funny. He's not charismatic. He's just a guy from the beach. He has, the man has got, all you do is you can look at the camera and that is it. And I'm like, oh, we're going to fight like demons. The guy, he's saying the thing like he's saying, we're going to get a Big Mac. 
Oh, I know I'm good. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get lost fries and a big strawberry milkshake, man. <laughs> I, 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 but, but, but look, at the end of the day, we all know that that should have either been done by either Ridley Scott or Spielberg. Yeah, obviously, if, man. Like, if it was done by, by Ridley Scott, it would be like a horror movie. No, no, but to be honest, yeah. by, 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 by Spielberg, look, it's the next I'll, adventure film. I'll be honest with you. As I see, here's my problem. I'll be honest with you. When I look at Dune, Denny Villeneuve is he's, he's the right guy for Dune. The problem is that he's the right guy up to a level but if you now this one is going to be no, 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 but, 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 wait, let me ask you this if you want dune to be successful mm -hmm. no he's not the right man mm. if you want it to be, like, know, oh, want it to be like the adventure no 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 i can guarantee you i can how many ben, um have hope, look how many, arrival thingy i can guarantee that have hope how here's the thing I don't think anybody's looking for it to be, to be successful. And that's the cleverest move they've done. Because let's be honest, how many successful films has Ridley Scott ever made? <laughs> Blade Runner bombed. Like, like Ridley Scott doesn't make successful films. So if you want it to be successful, your best bet is going to be Spielberg. But even then, it won't be successful because Dune is real. It's real. Like this is like real hardcore. As Denis Villeneuve said, it's hardcore sci-fi. In the day where where Kevin Feige is running right and he's polluting people's brains and he's rotting the minds of the average kid, the average moviegoer, do you? There's nobody that's going to yeah, make that's going to make it successful. It's not going to happen. People don't know. People don't know what's good anymore. Exactly. Yeah, so, they actually know. so, so the the cleverest thing they've done is say, you know what, Denis, go make a film. And the thing is that I'm so I'm disappointed because. Actually, you know, so, you know what, like, I think, no, no, the, no, thing no, about, I think the point, I think you're right, is like, because my thing is, can hardcore sci-fi succeed at the box office? No. Because yes, 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 at the yes, box office, yes, yes, it can for one simple reason. Yes, and, and for one simple reason, because there was somebody that literally has changed the planets, and his name is called Todd. Okay, Todd Phillips told everybody that if you make something good, as they say in Field of Dreams, the people will come. So people, they spend all the time saying, oh, you can't do it with an all black cast. Oh, you can't do this. You can't. No, 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 no. If you do something good, have faith, the people will come. And the guy made a billion with Joker. No, 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 no. Okay, so, no, no. Do you know why, do you know why I, I push, push back? Because that is still drama. And mm -hmm. drama is still very accessible to people. Sci-fi, especially hard sci-fi, is something very accessible to a large thingy of people. Because of I've, I've met many people who hate sci-fi. Drama is drama. Drama is human beings. Drama is when when life. when when was the last good quality sci-fi you saw that was made? When when? Probably my because equilibrium and um, counter sci-fi. Not really. When when was the last no, big? Reports. Because look at that. We we we've got we've got all these Star Trek movies that have come out. You've got this um um life movie that came with Ryan Reynolds. You have mm. this uh, movie that came out with um um uh George Clooney. You had the one that yeah. came out with um um or gravity, Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer Lawrence in this. You had Gravity. Yeah. Um, you had um did Alfonso Cuarón do one? I don't know. Hey, 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 Cuarón did gra gra Gravity. Gravity. So you've had all these movies that have come out. Mm. When was the last big budget sci-fi, hard sci-fi movie to come out? Because you can't really call Avatar big budget sci-fi. That's like almost like sci-fi with a heavy lean on fantasy. Because that so, was so really the same Minority Report then. Man, it's like a Minority is Minority Report hardcore sci-fi. You see, when you show hardcore sci-fi, is really Star Star Trek, and movies like Star Trek, movies like whatever you call it, those space movies, are, you know, Gravity. That's hardcore sci-fi. Then you have obviously Interstellar from the from, from that Mumu. That Interstellar that's come out. Then you have whatever you call it. Um, so that's your hardcore sci-fi. Interstellar. You have um, Gravity. You have um, the Star Trek movies. And how many of them have been good? How many of them have been good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Interstellar was was not was nonsense, man. And to, yeah, so in terms of sci-fi fantasy, the world has forgotten what hardcore sci-fi fantasy is. Yep. The one is, uh, they've actually forgotten what hardcore sci-fi fantasy is. 
because Dune is basically the fantasy, almost like a fantasy version of Lord of the Rings. Before Lord of the Rings came out, people forgot what big time, hardcore fantasy, you know, mystery, magic, what that was. Dune is the first movie that has just said, man, this is unabashed, full on sci-fi, hardcore fantasy. Nobody knows what to expect. Nobody even knows how to process it. So for me, I'm like, this movie will be successful. <laughs> and for the reason that it is going to be something that is the antithesis of that rubbish that is Marvel. But you had, like, in Infinity, you had what, um, so I didn't even know if you said that, Marvel MC movies are pretty much copy and paste. He's and, not wrong. Like, an assembly line. And now people were like, oh my gosh, like, why, 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 why do people keep saying that? Like, how are you trying to now defend Marvel? Film? It's like, guys, just keep take your money and leave. Listen, yeah, it's, it's, you, it's like, and you there's made nothing wrong with this. Exactly. There's exactly. nothing wrong with McDonald's. There is it's nothing. McDonald's. Exactly. There's, listen, I like McDonald's. I like it. When it comes to a certain time of the day, I like a such an egg McMuffin like anybody else. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, 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 I'm not, and I'm not ashamed about it. But don't McDonald's don't come and ask try to argue about the decency and the belief and the nourishment. And at the end of the day, it actually ha- no, no, come on, no. you're McDonald's. Like, like, like MC, it's it is literally if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's literally an, an assembly line, which is why Edgar Wright was booted off of Antsman, which is why Scott Derrickson wanted to make. Um, um, well, 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 he wanted to make Doctor Strange a horror movie, and Kevin Feige said, "No, get lost." It's just so. It's literally like have your comedy here, have gags because this is what what works. Boom, assembly line, you know. So it's 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 what it is, man. But like, no, I mean, look, I mean, the <laughs> like. I don't even know, like just even just the state of of films right now, man. I don't know. We need guys like Villeneuve to come in there and do some new stuff, man. Like seriously. How do you mean? No, I'm just saying, like we need guys like him that just make what they want to make. Auteurs, you know, yeah. I mean, I think you know, basically, what what Chris Nolan has been trying to force us to think he is, you know, and I think at the end of the day, is like what I think. See, Dune is a very important film because... Oh, he's he, important. Yeah, because the, Dune is what Nolan thought he was trying to do with um, um, that last trashy film he made. Yeah, it was it. The way, way he, he thinks he's the one that's oh. going to spearhead the, He always thinks he's... he's like, 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 no, nobody is rushing to go and watch like some kind of mathematical equation. <laughs> so because, you, know, or, you see, look, I can go on it. Look, Nolan is... That guy is beyond arrogant. But, but you are right with that. Dune is important because Dune could be a stage of oh my god. We can actually give authors a lot of money to make a tenth pole film for the year, you rather see, than see, this yeah, not on the real belt see, track. Here's here's the thing is that the, the thing that I like about so obviously I've talked about Oscar Isaac and it's like okay, you know that's a bit iffy, mm. but I we talked about Momoa, you know. But you see, here's it, the thing. Sorry, sorry, what? Yeah, we've got, Lady got Lady, but see, but here's the thing about Lady Jessica, you see, and the thing about um, you see, Peter Jackson, and I, there's a whole different conversation I, I want to have about Peter Jackson at another point because that is one seriously dodgy man. But it's yeah. like he, that guy has. You made a movie where Frodo and Aragon were not didn't show up because your actors went to this bizarre place in their minds where they got caught up in British fantasy. And Vigo and um, Elijah just basically, their brains just went to this, and as a result, Elijah Wood became a borderline girl, and um, uh, Vigo Morrison became like a plank of wood that you see on the, uh, in, in um, you know, not in Nottingham or something. That's what happened to those guys, and they just basically went to AWOL for the whole series. And what you have here, which I I find very refreshing, is that this is one project that I in the I've seen in a long time that I'm looking at the lead, the lead, mm. and the lead is looking like the best thing in the film. 
that to me is very very strange so i mean so is this based on just the trailer or stuff you've seen Chalamet do just the, just this trailer i mean no just, listen if, if i'd never seen this actor before which i've hardly seen it and just the trailer i'm like this man is giving a very good performance and you that know, is no, very no, strange for, this, for these kind of films La lady jessica just and lady jessica she's she's an actress that she may not she will not be annoying they're going to no, give no, her, no, 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 going to give her too much importance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but you know, it's, 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 it's funny though. Reading the book, I'm like, that is perfect casting. Okay, well, fine. But when is that? Mm. They, will, they, will, they will try to do hashtag me too, but based on her nature, she's never ever come across as that annoying, grating kind of actress. Mm. So I think it will be mitigated. So I think the thing about this is that, and so at the core of the thing, and obviously, you're, yes, yes, uncle. That guy, bizarrely, he, God knows the guys. I mean, we all saw that Las Vegas Zack Snyder movie. That guy is a horrific actor. But if that guy stays in his lane, he's extremely, yeah, yeah, yeah. extremely like, you know, he's basically, yes, uncle. As long as he's, he sticks to that, he's going to be very, very good in this film. So for me, I'm like. No, no, I think see, the issue with Villeneuve is that because I've seen this, because I, I watched Arrival recently again, and I was like, when I just watched this again, I'm like, yeah, this film was going really well, and then I just hated the ending. Like, the end, no, no, the ending was that they were trying to be too clever. They were trying to be too like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 It, was just, it was just too much. Obviously, the thing with Villeneuve is, this just shows that you can be the most talented you can be. The good person who I watch ask is who you are as a person yes, 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 is yes, key. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I just think that when you see Arrival and Blade 2049, you see this guy is very talented. Yes, yes But yes. who he is as a person, is what lets him down well, because, well, 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 yeah, because when it comes to these films, Spielberg is a particular kind of person, so you're going to get a particular kind of film all 360. James Cameron is a particular kind of person, so beyond just their talents of framing, I've, I've told everybody, I've told everybody, and I, I think you've seen it. And I sent you the link. The best trailer I've seen this year is The Final Deal, it's the best trailer oh. I've seen. The Final Deal, it's the best trailer oh, yeah, I've seen. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's a bit like, like ironically, it's, a, it, it's actually arguably the smallest film. It's the best film I've seen. I've seen because, Jude. Because Reedy Scott is from Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yes, no. You know, um, I, I think it's what South Shields. Yeah. No, that's where it's from. And the, the, you know, there's there's North, there's North Shields, South Shields. There's Alan Alan Shearer. There's Sheffield. There's, so we we know where it's from. <laughs> so and he has never changed. He's never changed. So it's one of those things where it's like, that is exactly <laughs> why. I'm also if you compare that to a Jewish guy who was obviously an outsider in school, a American from probably rural America who still has a chip on his, his shoulder, or to a Tim Burton who was an art school guy who was super weird and different, and you are just a Canadian French guy who you were, you are always in the whole arty stuff. It's, these are the things that people take for granted, but they matter. It's who you are as a person. The Wachowskis were very particular kind of people when they made The Matrix. Because, yeah. it's, because to make something like The Matrix and Reloaded, you have to be a, a particular kind of person that thinks a particular kind of... Not, not that you are a particular kind of person. Like when we have dinner, you're a particular kind of guy and, and person. So the thing with Dune is that Dune will just hit some marks because of just how good this guy is visually. Because this guy destroys Nolan on a visual artistic level. Like, Nolan does not have an artistic bone in his body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, that guy's not cool. That guy oh, no. is. <laughs> See, <laughs> when I knew this was Inception. Inception? No, 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 no. See, Inception was tricky. I, Inception, Inception was like, okay, it, this it is. Was, no, 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 no. I'm trying to hope it was. Inception is. Inception is. Inception visually. Should be Jacob's ladder. Sorry, so, so, sorry, start that again. Who told you what? No, no. Remember, you recommended Jacob's ladder to me, and then I remember okay, watching right, right. it on yeah. Netflix. Yeah. And when you think of Inception, visually, how you feel the aura should be Jacob's ladder because you're dealing with dreams. How do you enter a dream by pressing a red button on some kind of like VHS Beta Max contraption? And he does, and the most because remember I asked um, the Mark this that, and he never bothers explaining to you how, no. how he does it, and nobody bothers saying Nolan. Can you tell us how it works? Because he's so amazing that he doesn't need to explain himself. Yeah, he to he any, to, oh, because, oh, this, 
Let's, 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 no. Ugh, give me a break. How and, do you enter these freaking dreams? And, what is and, the and remember, if we have to ask, that means that we are stupid, mm. basically. So, so in order to feel that we are not dumb, we should never actually question anything because that means we're not as clever as him. So, and no, we are lucky, you know, that he's even taken time to make these films for us. Because the issue with Nolan is people. Once people prop you up to be this genius and so forth, the guy he's going to buy into it. So he'll spend. So he'll get a character, and the character will will talk about a mathematical equation for two minutes. I say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I there's a reason why I left chemistry, maths, and so forth because I <laughs> I, I, I hate that stuff. Now I'm now living away from school. You can't put me back into school after paying like ten pounds worth. No. Listen, man. I I tried to watch Tenet, and I watched the first twenty minutes, and I turned it off. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. No, it's, it's no. It's, it's Tenet. Like, 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 basically, which is why I want Dune to succeed, because I want Dune to just finally say, Nolan, bro, get that Oppenheimer. They just don't get that crap oh, out of if, it. If Dune succeeds, Nolan is gonna have a problem with that one. Listen, oh, man, if, if if Dune is good, because, because, because do you know why? No, no, you can't do that. And so, so and, 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 and is this, I'm French and Canadian. On a and, visual artistic level, you can't do that. And most importantly, that is what he's always wanted to do. Yes, that is what he's. That Dune is what he's always wanted no, to no, do. And, and see, see, no, no, see, Nolan is a guy where you are fighting against your nature. Nolan, you are memento. You see, Villeneuve can't do memento. That small, trippy thing, very local, very condensed. That's what, but he wants to be, he wants to do Star Wars. He wants to do, but you don't have the visual artistic nature to do those films. And once, see, it's funny. See, people just believe, oh, no, no, that guy. Once people watch you, okay, the film may not work. The story might be, what's going to do is like, oh my God, this thing looks crazy. <laughs> You can, you just don't look. You just like just on a visual level of like the stuff that you just see mixed with Hans Zimmer's music. Yeah, yeah because, so, so, we so saw we, how Nolan yeah. used Hans, Hans Zimmer's music for yeah, inception. Yeah, but after we, yeah, we talked about all this about I day. You get the best out of the, what Hans Zimmer will deliver for Snyder. It's not what he'll deliver for Nolan. It's not what he'll deliver for Denis Villeneuve. Which is not what he'll deliver for Ridley Scott. They all bring different things out of the guy. Now Zimmer is not on the level of John Williams, and you know. John Williams is not going to be with us for much longer on this planet, and that's just mm -hmm. life. But like John Williams will give you what is needed. Doesn't give doesn't matter who the hell the person is, because he's he's a level higher than that. But for me, it's like, you know, um, you for me, the most the most interesting interesting thing for me about Dune is the actual lead. I'm like, this is interesting because this guy looks like he's actually going to be the star of the film. And you know, it's very rare that you see that in but, 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 but how can you really because it's just a trailer, though. Remember, trailers can be very misleading. Half yeah. over. With me, it's always a hunch. Remember, 60-40. 60-40. Yeah. 60-40. It's a hunch. So let's see what happens. So at the day, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, and that is something that has legs. Because at the end of the day, this movie, this could be going for another two or three films. But it's internet. This, this looks like a person that he can actually shoulder, shoulder, shoulder this film. And then you have Obviously, our friend in the wings, Javier Bardem, and we know what he can do. So, at the end of the day, I also, there are, also got um, Skarsgård as well. Scott, yes. Yeah, so, so basically, I look, I, you know, um, that guy, he's got that locked. Yes, 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 uncle, he's got that locked. Whatever you call it, um, then Javier Bardem, they got that locked. Your problem areas is going to be, I'm just going to fight like demons. You know, he, you're, you're, you're going to have it. You're, you're, you've got a problem with that. Because in Game of Thrones, he kept his mouth shut. <laughs> he was just like the whatever you call it. He was just looking at the camera, so it works. Now he's trying to be this charismatic, you know, vile killing. I'm just like, mate, you're, you're just, just stupid, just stupid. And the way he delivered that, let's fight like demons. You look like you're about. Let's let let's go to the arcade or something. Like, so it's like, it's not like, hey, guess what, guys? I got an idea. I got a great idea. We're gonna fight like demons. I'm like, no, that's not how you're meant to deliver that lie. <laughs> so and. Villeneuve has got to call you out on that. But anyway, that's life. But, uh, you know, the um, Chalamet, I'm like, man, you know what? Looking like you're going to be on top for this one, man. So I'm like, you know, and when you're in that kind of a space, you're, I think the good thing about doing that, Dune seems like, see, what I like about Dune 
is that it doesn't look like it's pretending to be anything. It doesn't look like it's trying to shout. It doesn't look like it's trying to scream. It's just doing serious sci-fi. So for me, I'm like, you know, you're saying you don't think it can be, I think this one will be successful. How successful? I think successful enough that you're gonna see part two. And once you're into that lane, because um, trust me, people are sick of Marvel, man. <laughs> in fact, it's going to, part of why it's going to be successful is because of Marvel. That's why, because... Oh, no, no, because, because, because I, I think it's true. Like, I think people are sick of Marvel, but they don't want to admit it because there's never exactly. been an alternative. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, look, if this is all there is, well, we just have to be happy because this is all there is. But once you say, oh, no, there's another... There's an because there's never been another option. It's just been Marvel or bust, DC or bust, superhero or, or bust. Because I'm sick and tired of comic book films, man. I, <laughs> you am, know. I, am, I never thought that day would come. I'm like, I'm yeah. sick and tired of this rubbish. It's like, okay, the an origin story again, the same villain, the same trick, like. It's all the same. It's all the same. It's all the same tricks. It's all the same tricks of, of, of the trade. So even if it turns to be garbage, it's at least it's different. <laughs> at end game, it's... like I always say, end game was end game was the end game for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm finished. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it was very well named because that yeah. that was the end. That was the end of the game. Be, 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 because have, have have you guys seen Black Widow? No, no. <laughs> Why would I watch that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that they, they said that they wrote the first draft of Black Widow in 11 days? <laughs> I'm just thinking about Scarlett Johansson. Like, look, look, Scarlett, you can't ask for a hundred million when you were the worst actor in your own film. Like, Scarlett, I don't care what it says in the contract. You can't ask for a hundred million when you deliver a garbage film and you were outacted by everyone else in that film. I'm sorry. They, like that, that doesn't work. So you've got Black Widow, which is a mess. Now, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is good, but it suffers from the same Marvel issues, which you will see if you end up watching Shang-Chi. But because it's look, Asian, action and everything is on point, <laughs> you know, because it's an Asian director. It, so look, the in terms of action execution, oh, it's amazing, but it's a conveyor belt. It's, it's gonna, so, yeah, the steam is gonna run out eventually, man. You see, Infinity. Here's here's the thing: is that I thought the steam was gonna run out before. I'm not sure <laughs> when it's gonna run out. We all did because I'm I'm not tempting face because I thought this would be done about ten years or about ten years. <laughs> <laughs> because my thing is that I'm looking at even when I'm talking about, I'm like, ah, this stuff has been pretty. And going and going like it's been a long when, time. When will it end? Yeah, like when will this night this I mean, nightmare this, like, this nightmare if, end? If, because you're dealing with stuff that you've just hit something that's hum that people on mass will always get into. So it's a mixture of CGI, comedy, a particular kind of storyline, particular story beats. That guys are just gonna just keep going and going. Yeah, but they they don't have anybody left though. Who do they have left? Oh, the, have you heard of reboot? X Men. Have you heard of, of Reboot? Oh, Re we are. I think this is we're now on our third. Is this the third Spider Man? Yeah, we're on our third Spider Man now. Within within a spread of like eight years or something, which is which is pretty incredible. Or well, let's say what ten years or something. So so yeah, I mean so but but. This Marvel thing, which is why I say I'm not sure whether Dune stops it. No, no, Dune doesn't st stop it. Even if Dune is successful, it doesn't stop it. We gotta, make sure, we gotta make sure we watch Dune, man. If Dune's good, I'm going back two or three times. Oh, yeah, no, yes, yeah. See, see, but things that see, nothing, nothing can stop, nothing can stop Marvel. Marvel is going to stop itself. So it's going to stop it because at the end of the day, what is going to happen, I believe, is that, you see, movies, people are going to get bored. There's, there might be something new that... It might be reality TV. Like, Marvel cannot keep going because it's not good. And human beings, can, human beings cannot keep pretending that something is good that is not good. Now, here's the thing. The, the, the fans that Marvel have created so far are going to stick with them because they're too stupid to move to Dune. They don't understand what Dune is. 
Hmm. So they're just going to keep going and going until they can get more and more. But eventually, something crazy is going to come out. It's going, it might be reality TV in the cinema. It might be so. There's going to be some new gimmick that people are just going to go. I don't know what it's going to be, because Marvel is just the thing is rubbish. You're getting rubbish. You know, um, it's it's it, you know it's it's. Um, we, we live in very strange time, but obviously, um, what's his name said it, um, David Fincher. Mm. People are just, they're just looking for the biggest bonfire, man. That's it. Yeah, no, no I mean, like, like it, because it's because I, I look at just these Marvel films and so forth, and you're like, you see, you see it's, it's people are just different because in my mind, I'm like, this is perfect example, like Thor. Like that's nonsense. Like all right wrong. That's that that is nonsense. But I was having a, a discussion with someone about it, and they loved the Rag Ragnarok. And I'm like, how? Well, it's here's, here's the thing about Thor for me. I'm not a Thor fan, mm. so I actually liked Ragnarok, man, because it, it wasn't at all like a, you know what a normal Thor movie would be about, you know. Yeah. So I, I liked it for that, but um. Listen, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest with everybody, and I said it after I saw it. Thor Ragnarok is a great sci fi comedy. Young. Yeah, basically, that yeah, is yeah. like it's, it's, it's almost like it's in the vein of like Back to the Future. It's Taika Waititi, he's good. The problem is that it's got nothing to do with Thor. That's the, that. that <laughs> but, but yeah. in, in, in fitness, this is what I would say like if that thing was named like Law or Bro or something, yeah, it'd be great. It's actually pretty funny. It's actually pretty. That's, that's, oh, that's actually that's that's actually like, a pretty interesting thing. But Jeff, Jeff Goldblum was oh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Goldblum was amazing. Oh, superb. But, 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 it's just that, like obviously, one of our, our family friends, Babs, who's a huge Thor fan, is I like, know Thor is famous. <laughs> like Thor is known. Basically, <laughs> Thor is a agent. very famous character. Basically, Thor Ragnarok is basic is basically a modern day Flash Gordon. That's what it was. Yeah. It's the same vibe, the same idea of, you know, and, and I th you know, I, I think he was in the running to do a Flash Gordon thing. Like yeah, 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 yeah. And speaking, um, speaking of which, Ak Akira as well, he's going to be doing an Akira. Yeah. And, he actually, and he still wants to do it. But when I, when no, I no, 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 but that thing is, you see, you see, first of all, how do you put this as a live action? How? You, you can't. It'll cost a, it'll cost a billion dollars. Basically, basically. That's what you, this, this man, let's like, it's it's animation. It. Basically, you can't do it. The guy that has to do it is basically Steven Spielberg, who won't do it. And your actors have to be Asian, and it's got to be Tokyo. Yeah. You know, got, yeah, exactly. You know, all those. Once you hit those marks, Spielberg will, will will give you Akira in New Tokyo. He'll 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 do that for you. You know, and there's an amazing real live action Akira movie out there that can be made by you know the right people. You know. Yeah. Um, but but it, it's, it's like you know it's got to be japanese man that's the thing it's, Akira, it's, it's too japanese it has to be has japanese to be, it has to be 100 percent japanese don't even try and get cute you think has got to be a hardcore japanese so you know um is is america is the world and i think now the world the way the world has gone now you know you see this uh, what's the name emma radicano um tennis player oh yeah that that girl is going to make billions Bill, billion, not, not billions, billionaires. That's how much money that woman is going to make. And as Serena Williams has said, Serena Williams is now going to understand the way the world works. Because that girl, she's just won one little thing. But based on her eth ethnicity, yeah, because so, so, basically, yeah, point because big, the other the China crowd, yeah, exactly. The and, and, crowd. and then and she was coming out and making her spanky speeches in Mandarin and stuff like that. So that's why, like, Akira. The way the world the world has changed now, where something like an, an old Japanese Akira is actually a bonus because people are sick of all the same, the same, the same for the last people today, they want to see something different. They want to be entertained. Mm -hmm. And you have so many different kinds of so many demographics that now are affluent and have money and want to spend money. Well, like, yeah. you know, because the whole point is that the whole thing about being diverse isn't just doing it for diverse points. It actually yeah. helps. <laughs> you want to make you want to make cash. Yeah, yeah. So, no, so from a financial point of view, it will actually be more helpful for you because basically, look at Fast and Furious. 
Yeah. They're, they're about to do their 10th film. And look at what the cast looks like. <laughs> yeah, that's too, like, too, too real, like real diversity is actually like a really good thing. Yeah, it is. It is. No. It is, it is I'm sorry, the, the world is the, the world isn't how it was in the 70s or the 80s. This is 2021. It's a very it's a world ruled by Lil Weezy, Drake. You know all these dudes, man. Yeah, a very strange world ruled by those very, very, very strange people. No, no, but you know, funny. It's like this is actually the perfect time for a proper Matrix film to come out. Of course it is. And that, and half hope, you see, oh God, you just, you just keep knocking out pearls of wisdom. Half, half hope, basically, here's the deal. If all the gang came back mm. and this movie was, and this is why I told chosen one, here's my pitch. Here's my pitch. <sighs> Neil, messed everything up when he went into the wrong door he was meant to go into back to the source to the right yeah and boot the matrix up back again but because of trinity who changed everything this iteration he goes to the left and in doing that he's paid an ultimate price and what is that ultimate price he will never be recycled when he goes this time he goes but before he goes, he has a lot of knowledge and a lot of awareness of the matrix that he has the ability to download to a potential new anomaly. That new anomaly will be an Asian girl, okay? Mm. Uh, preferably, you know, Chinese or something. Mm. And she is the one who is starting off, who will basically be the new matrix lead. And that's what, so, so this movie will literally be about Neo is dying he knows he's going because he's going to be based on Trinity and the decision he made. He's never coming back again. But before he goes, he needs to basically get the info he has to this girl. But the last thing the Matrix wants is for him to be able to pass that information along. Because they think that if we can kill him, he's never coming back. And he'll never be able to pass all the knowledge he has across. So it is stopping Neo from being able to get that information to her, basically. And that's the, that is the crossover for this Matrix movie. And everybody comes back, and you make the most balls up Matrix movie you can make, and have hope, that movie kills Marvel. Ooh. That's a good pitch, no, 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 yeah, no, I mean, because it's like a film that just makes a commentary on, on the state of the world and with action and stuff, guys were like, oh, wait, a film can actually entertain and inform us as well. So even the mindless people will even, because that's what um, Colonel West said, that was the beat of the Matrix, that the Matrix has like 400 levels. Some people yep. walk away with two, some with 20, some with 50, some with 150, some with all 400. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Colonel, he made a mistake because that's only the Matrix 1, which is why so many people rejected the Matrix 2. Because Matrix 2, Reloaded ain't got no levels. That thing is exactly what you see is what you're getting. I, I like it, I love it, but that doesn't work. The movie with levels is Matrix One, which is why yeah. what they so what they, that's why what what they're saying now is like oh now we're gonna go back and let's do the oh, this movie we always wanted from part two. But things that Wachowski's you guys never had the ability to make that kind of a part two, which is why you made the kind of part two you did make. So don't now get confused and think that now you're gonna become a deep philosopher. No, you're not. Matrix One touched on things. Mm -hmm. Matrix 2 meant that you'd have actually had to be the real deal. You'd have to be the real Kant, the real Bernard Williams, the real um, um, Spinoza, the real whatever you call it, to mm -hmm. actually come, come in and really, and they know they can't do that, so they went in the other direction. Fair enough. So don't get it twisted. You know, but now I'm like, you know, what, what the Matrix will, needs to do is you need to entertain. And you need to entertain in the way that Kevin Feige and all his cronies, <laughs> all those all those two bit cronies could never do. And you guys, you can do it. You can do it. But you need to do it together. You don't do it together, you can't do it. But a a matrix that returns like King Beowulf to come and destroy all the upstarts, that is one. See, that's what Star Wars should have been if Spielberg did it. But that that boat has passed. That boat has sailed. The other guy, the other sleeping giant, is the Matrix. And the Matrix is a lot more suited to the real world, as you say, Hapop. It's real. 
if you guys came in like that sleeping giant that has in its dormant years has allowed these idiots to run right and you return on a wave of excellence you will destroy kevin feige and his cohorts you'll do it you'll do it and you make it some asian girl you bring in the martial arts you bring in the music you bring in the merchandising you'll do it because kevin feige and his bunch they are there for the taking because they're rubbish but somebody has to be good enough to capitalize on the fact that they're rubbish but there's but there's no because everybody just wants to join them to get paid a lot of the guys who could actually fight them want to join them to get yeah, paid. yeah, yeah look, because it's, it's 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 a quick payday it's a very good day and make a marvel mc movie get into this whole because look see because if you can beat him join him but then that's what todd phillips because todd phillips he was almost in the same class because he said that i think it was after he did war dogs he looked at a comic book like post i was like you know what the only way that anyone's going to watch my movie is if it's a comic book movie so he then had a trick of like let me just present it as a comic book film but actually just make a film Kevin, 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 todd phillips has shown you that marvel can be beaten yeah, yeah. All the reason, all you need to do with these is just make, these, make, make something that is good that just catches fire through what it's like. Have a you make something good, give Mel Gibson Superman, they, they give Mel Gibson Superman, they they beat okay. No, no, be, 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 because my thing is that don't give me that crap about oh, um, the Suicide Squad was a really good movie. That's oh, just shut up, shut up, no, shut up, no, 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 it's wrong. no, no, it's wrong. no, 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 I, I haven't watched the film and I have no intention of watching the movie. Oh, 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 neither have I, and I have no intention of watching that film. Yes, I'm like, how about you get him to explain why he's cracking those jokes and why you guys all very suspiciously drew, have very conveniently found a way to forget that because you think he's the guy that's going to make you lots of money. That You see, Hollywood is a very scary place. Very, very, very scary place. And Dave Batista, who was supporting him, and like, do you guys realize what this guy was doing? No. And you have all conveniently forgotten what he was doing because he's making you money. And you are an official Disney studio, Hollywood, Marvel. You guys have all, I mean, listen, that um, guys, that guy, James, I'm like, listen, that is one incredible scenario where people, everyone's like, we all pretend like, oh, oh, we are the good people. Oh, we are the good ones. We are the survivors. Look at how you guys have behaved with um, James Gunn. Look how you got it's incredible. I should go and watch the guys film. I should go and pay to watch the guys film. Mm. Come on, come on, come on. That's why look, look, I don't even bother with all I don't bother getting to that. I, I wish everybody all the best. But for me, I'm like, you know what? With me, I think that that Todd Phillips has, has shown the way. How many people mm. can step up to that? How, 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 who? Who? And that's the problem. Who? You need, I need Aronofsky to make Wolverine. That's the only way. It's it's that's point. Is you need the real artists. You need the real deal. No, no, because that's what Vilnov said. Say people are like, oh, Vilnov. No, if you actually read what Vilnov said about MC, that sometimes the artists can veer off the pattern, but there's a very clear pattern they have to go with. So you're watching Black Panther. If it if if Black Panther was down to Kukla completely, do you think he'd have? CGI rhinos and stuff in the end of his film. No. <laughs> but it's an MC movie. We need it. No, 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 wrong. I think I I think he would because for the simple same reason that he had a CG um 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 yellow jaguar fighting a CG black panther out there for no for no reason. Like why is this a cartoon? And they're like flipping about those um energy blood. It was the, the thing that killed Black Panther was the fighting. It was on a cartoon, him jumping over that car, flipping. Mm. You're doing you're, you're doing like CG. I'm like, mate, what, what's going on? Nobody, Kevin Feige, listen, Kevin Feige will never tell you that you have to use CG to your fighting. Never. Never yeah, tell you. Like, look at Winter Soldier, you know. Yeah, like exactly. Kevin Feige delivered Winter Soldier. He will never tell you that. And part of why Kevin Feige is successful is because he's not an idiot. He's not stupid. He's not. It's just that he. Oh no 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 no! Because he knows that it's a balance of like. It's a balance. Puts these jokes and comedy in there, but there still needs to be a certain level of quality. 
exactly. You, 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 really, the brilliance of him is that you need to be able to fool people to think that there's something here, even though there's nothing. Because Kevin Feige has kept people watching his movies for over a decade, and they're watching a series of films where nobody gets hurt, nobody dies. Nothing ever no, no, no. Do, do you know the, 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 greatest, the greatest trick he pulled was Infinity War? No, no, no. See, you know, I argue that. How do you like a film where... No, no, no. This is best Guys, li listen to this. So I, was, I was having this discussion with in, 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 in Infinity War with someone yes, yesterday. And I hated that. And he loved the film. And he said that Thanos is the protagonist and the Avengers are the antagonists. Probably. Then I, 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 I removed my, my headphones and I, I left the room. <laughs> see, but that, you is, see, that is the world we now live in. That's, that's, that's the world. That's the, so you've reached a point where you watched an Infinity War and you're going to accept a villain is have, now the main have character. Hope. <laughs> have, have hope. Have hope. Have hope. You want me to watch a film where you hunted down and hacked down the villain <laughs> in the first second of it. And at the most important bit, half of here's the most important bit, is that is that the guy, the guy who the guy who they are fighting at the end. You remember that in in movies, in movies, the final fight, the final fight is the culmination of the antagonist and the protagonist story that's the final fight it's where everybody's story comes to a, a culmination he now says i'm now here to meet you based on everything you did and the other guy goes i'm here to meet you based on everything that you have done that is the final conflict <laughs> feige made people watch a final conflict in a film where the bad guy doesn't know who he's fighting <laughs> that is ridiculous, man. When, when all those when all those guys come out of the portal, he doesn't know who the hell he doesn't know who they are. He he's not pretending. He genuinely doesn't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and I'm like. If, if I was at the studio, like I'm, with Kev, I'm like Kevin, man, listen, in it, in it, because in a way, that's uh, that's like you're you're bullying Thanos. Because, 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 no, no, happened, no, no, it happened because Thanos. Okay, bless. Okay, look, bless, bless him. Thanos came to fight a bunch of guys. That's yeah. who he came to fight. <laughs> and you and you now spring like a whole battalion of the guy that you had no idea existed. <laughs> because that's, you know, because one of those like when you know when Thanos is looking at them coming through, he's genuinely like, he's, no, he's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, it's ridiculous. And nobody and the most listen, and people people just watch this. And they think they've they've watched something. They think they've watched something. <laughs> no, 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 but like, see, the issue with the, see this what Francis the Fence was that that ending is a garbage ending because you're watching people dying, but because we know that this thing is a conveyor belt, we, well, we know, know when they're coming back. Released. Yeah. So we so we know that a Spider-Man movie has been announced. We know a Black Panther sequel is coming through. So they announced that he just signed. He signed a contract after Infinity War. That they, they announced the yeah. contract. So I'm like, so I'm like, guys. So see, here's the other thing I said. Okay, people say, oh, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. Okay, fine. Listen, I can get all that if, let's say, you see, that's why I like. You know what? It's boring. It's boring. Like the Russo brothers. Look at how you introduced Thanos in the, the beginning of Infinity War. The guy just just walked into the ship of the. Um, no, 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 but, no, but you see. It goes back to the point that um, this guy that I did a podcast with is making. He's accepted that Thanos is the protagonist. Oh, well, there you go. So if you accept his protagonist and he's now the main character and the Avengers are now the antagonist and so forth. Oh, okay then. So therefore, because when I say, Thanos, can you shut up? You're supposed to be the villain. Imagine if, 
Darth Vader or Sauron. Imagine if we had a film where we followed Sauron all the way through the, the film and Sauron was, was, was giving speeches. He was like, have, what is this, this is Sauron. I had Why to do, do it. What Sauron I, feels? Uh, I had to do it as, <laughs> as, as a human being is punching him. Star, Star Lord. Star Lord, a human. He goes, oh, I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> no, it's it's the, just, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's which why I said, like, guys need to understand. This is what I'm trying to like, explain to the guys that you can veer off and do things in a different way, but there are certain things that need to be maintained. If I saw that as a child, I wouldn't be able to get my head around the fact that I saw Thanos die and they're fighting him again. <laughs> even though, like, I, even, you know, even as a kid, I'm like, um, it doesn't. It, it does not make any sense. No, you know, that, that's a very key point. If I was eight years old, nine years old, I'd have no idea what I'm watching. I don't know what's going on here. Because I'm like, they already killed the bad guys. So, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't understand the whole time thing. I'm like, so, what? Is, because the time thing would be something that would be too complicated for a for an eight or seven year old's mind. I mean, like, Infinity, if you were seven or eight years old and you watched End King, would you understand what the heck was happening? Not really, man. To be honest, no, man. It's 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 weird, isn't it? You know, it's um. No, no, but, no, no, but, but and I, I think like that's why like the issue. Look, look here's you no. Know, in all honesty, though, I liked Endgame. I liked it. Like I hated Infinity War. Infinity War is. Uh, I, I, I'm the I, opposite. I, I'm the opposite. I liked Infinity War more than Endgame. Oh, you know, no, no, I, I hated it in Infinity War. Like, Endgame was still stupid and made some very stupid things, but I enjoyed the experience of Endgame a lot more than in Infinity War. For me, Infinity War was just... Infinity War isn't a film. It's a guy just collecting rings. <laughs> like, like, so you're... So I'm just watching a guy just go around just collecting rings. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, some great special effects, some great CGI, some great action scenes, but it's just a guy collecting rings. And... Basically, the villain I saw in the trailer ain't the dude I saw in that Infinity War. Like the dude I saw in the trailer was like, "Oh, jeez, this this is the bad." That guy, is he uh, is he really the villain? Like, I didn't feel like if I should even hate Thanos. And um, Vision got killed twice in the same film. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, basically, like it's just a very strange, very very. Look, you, no, 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 I mean, I liked Endgame just in terms of how it just ended and wrapped things to, to, to together. I thought that based on an ending, I thought that was a very good ending of wrapping over 20 something films and so forth, you know. Um, but now you now have a situation where you have like Black Falcon. Like, so what's that? That's Captain America? So you have, you have a situation of Black Falcon. You ever see a situation of a Spider-Man that still doesn't know how to be his own hero? Are you in a situation where I'm now hearing rumors of other Spider-Men in one Spider-Man film? Like, into I'm like, okay, all well, right. Spiders, also, in, a, in a, like a Sp Spider-Verse, Spider-Verse, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, the, the rumors is that the one like they keep on denying it that oh we're not in it, but because they keep on asking that um, Andrew Garfield, oh he says no, I'm not in the new Spider-Man, I'm not in the new Spider-Man film. Bro, they're gonna do do that. He's in it because, He's in because it. They, they, they can't give Tom Holland his, his own. They can't make him his own hero. So, and if you if you put Toby Maguire in that film, you know Tom <laughs> Holland will be because of not 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 no nostalgia. It's, I mean, if he's gonna steal the show, yeah, no. If you have Toby Maguire in that film, it's, it's nobody's over. gonna be talking about Tom Holland. They'll be talking about oh my gosh, my childhood, blah blah blah. blah. Wow. But it's look, it's 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 all it's like it's all a mess, man. Man, to 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 the guy practically died once Spider Man died, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah, bad. look, his career was 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 done. Like the Capri has to just um give him like a solid in um Ritz Gatsby and that was it. You know. <clears throat> but like um his 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 career started man. Um but yeah, sweet. <laughs> Because remember, you, you said that um, when Cameron brings out Avatar, it's going to be like Oculus Rift. 
Yeah. yeah. You, better, you, better, you better do something with this Avatar thing because you. Wait, Avatar came out in 2009. We're now going to like 12 years now since that film was released. Well, it's for me, if, and I, what I said is like Oculus Rift, like I said very specifically, the technology, and obviously it's a big call, so we'll see what happens. You know, as I said, 60 40. Mm. So I've told, I've told you about Chalamet, 60 40. I'm not telling you about Oculus Rift, 60 40. What I'm saying is that with this, guys, like, I think it's going to be a panel. There's going to be a front. In fact, it might just be one, one strip. You know, like, you know, so it would so be very, like, re reproducible. You know, it'd be like one kind of strip that just goes around your eyes and it's, it's panoramic. Mm. Where if you look to your left, you'll see action on the left hand side and it's periphery action. So let's say you're watching God, Godfather, right? You yeah. could have, you could be watching Marlon Brando talking to um, Michael Corleone. Yeah. But then if you look right, you might see Sonny talking to somebody else. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but what Sonny is doing is like secondary acting. So if you're interested, so it's very weird. It'd be like, yeah, 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 I don't understand, yeah. You could come back and watch so, 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 a movie. So it's really down to the viewer what you want. Exactly. To experience. Or you could come back and watch a movie and you could have a very different experience every time because you'd be like, oh, so in that scene when Vito was telling Michael Corleone this, if you look at the side, you actually see Sonny looking very pissed off. It could be something like that, you know? So these just little flavors of the film, which it doesn't really change the story, but you could be like, okay, go back and watch that scene. But when you watch that scene this time, look to your left. And you could you might see a woman sit doing something or cooking something. And it's not something that's going to change the film, but it gives you... So it's almost like, you know, it's, it'll, it'll, work, it'll almost work like real-time deleted scenes. Where oh, yeah, oh, they, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they amplify the film but they don't change the actual movie and that is going to completely revolutionize how movies are made and it is very doable yeah, no, that'll be mad and it's extremely doable very 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 doable you know and and from the way you know look you've got mobile phone now phones now where you can open them and you can fold mobile phones so you yeah. have that kind of floppy screen technology already there you have oculus rift already there John Gator has already done multi-camera bullet time. So the technology is there to do that kind of thing. It depends on how you shoot it. But I guarantee you, it's going to be something like that. I mean, no, 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 no. That, that would be crazy. Have, have, have you like, tried, like have you tried any, uh, I'm sorry, man. Have you tried any VR games? There was one when I was... In the office, obviously years ago now, like I think there was this VR game that um someone gave me. I was like a a horror game. I was like, bro, I ain't doing no VR horror. But was, <laughs> yeah, it's just like this like haunted house. Dude, Silent thing, Hill. That is, I, I can't do them either. Like normally, I can play horror games on its own, but the fact that you you can't escape it because you're oh, literally no, no, inside. No yeah. way, man. No, no way, Jose. Like, like, like I was doing this whole haunted mansion thing, man, and this thing was freaky. This thing was freaking freaking. I remember that when I played Silent Hill, Silent Hill on PS One, that was quite. Scary. <laughs> 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 and I think half half of my people remember. So. No, 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 I was there. I was yeah. always there. I was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Like, no, but I think the future. Even speaking of even gaming as well, man. Like, because obviously, once you obviously like you know all gaming, they like. Do you see this is crap with? Because me and Infinity, we spoke about it before. You see this crap with GTA Five. Oh, like how like they've now really they're releasing it. It came out on the PS3, and they're now remastering it for the PS5. And guys have said they've had enough. So basically, like the latest trailer has like loads of thumbs downs. You Funny, know what? Like, uh, yeah, I was looking at that three. man. It's, it's, it's like, actually they're actually yeah. responding. Yeah, no, no, finally, I, guys like no like. Okay, fair enough. PS4. Yes, you want to release it on a third console? I mean, that is because obviously, like I was explaining to Infinity, and like, I think it's something that did that reason why I've never played San Andreas or GT is that I can't play with a black character just dropping the like, like, nah, man, I'm, I'm good, <laughs> I'm good at that. So it's as particularly frustrating because I'm like, okay, I've missed out on this because you've made a trash black character that I can't control. Can I get a GTA 6? <laughs> 
Can I get a GTA 6? Hey, but they, see, they, they, they just can't help themselves. Basically, the reason I didn't do GTA 5, and trust me, that's, see, basically, okay, have hope. You, you know I never did San Andreas. The reason mm. I, and, I, and you know I didn't do San Andreas, and I didn't do GTA 5 partly for that reason, because they had to do it. They just had to do it again. It's, just too, <laughs> it's too irresistible because that is like their fantasy. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But the second thing is that three people? No. Yeah. No. Come on. Now, and things are, see, here's the thing I don't get. You have, why have you not done the Eddie Murphy, Tango and Cash, 90s LA cop thing? Yeah, no. that's, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, like, like basically where you can go, basically you can be like a corrupt cop and go like arresting people. And, yeah, but, the LA, LA Noir. yeah, but because because it's, and you do it like those 90s movies, you know, you know, 90 minutes of Aprox back of the VHS, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, it's like, you know, Eddie Murphy, Beverly Hills cop. That, that, those, those movies were flying, were just a standard flat rate, you know, um, late, late 80s, early 90s. So you can either do that or why not do something else? Like a future city, like a Blade Runner, so a GTA Blade Runner. This is like massive as well. Like you can basically create your character, and then you're like, yeah, you're like in a, in a sci-fi city. Yeah, but, but, but my but, thing though but, is but that keep keep copy that and paste. Though. It's like it's similar to the MCU thing. These guys, hey, they know what these guys GTA guys want, and they're just going to deliver the same thing. Like, hey, this is a whole GTA thing. But it's like, yeah, 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 but the thing is that that is what GTA guys because they did it for, with, with Vice City. It's like what. All you have to do, and you say they've done L.A. Noir. Mm. If you said, "Listen, what we're going to do, we're, go, we're just going to go left field here, and we're just going to go, okay, we're going to do a future city," and you're walking around and like you're like a you're basically a bounty hunter, yeah, like like John Deckard, whatever you call it, sorry, Rick Deckard in Blade Runner. That, that that's your thing. My God, come on, mate, that thing is going to that thing is going to fly off the shelves. That thing's going to fly off the shelves. You know, but it's it's, it's all about ideas. It's sort of like with Halo. The fact that Halo never brought in for the operational airplanes is I've never understood. <clears throat> and, and and also like the fact that you couldn't really have basically like what you saw in Star Wars Battlefronts, where yes. you're like fighting your the, the battle is dynamic. It's in the trenches, like, it's in that is exactly what I'm saying when I'm saying because of Battlefront, Battlefronts on the on planet Hoth and Bespin City. You fly onto the landing bay, you get in your plane, and you can talk to your guys who are on the ground, and you're flying about and doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you can do, if you can do that in play in, in Battlefront, why can't you do that in, in Halo? No, and, because well, because I'll say something like, do you like Halo Two Xbox Live? Do you know how? Uh, I'm, just for uh, a short statement. <laughs> uh, excuse me. The 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 Mac says that's one of the best times of his life because oh yeah, he, no, because in, in in those days he was unemployed. Oh so yeah. He, yeah, yeah. He used to go to the job center, get paid, come back, and just wait for everyone to get online on um, Halo. But see, <laughs> like, see like... Here's, here's another point I said about the Halo thing, and I told um, the Merc and other people, another I I idea. Why didn't they have something like planets? Where yeah. And this is where having airplanes and ships come into play. Each clan, you have your mothership, right? And on your mothership, you have your, you know, banshees, but fully operational banshees that aren't just like little hover things, but they fly. You get in there, it's first person, third person, and it's in your hangar bay in your ship. We're like Mass Effect. You have your ship, yeah, 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 and all your all your clan respawn on the ship. And the whole point of Halo is that you're not know, like that beach landing, which is basically like Saving Private Ryan, the very amazing le level in Halo 1 on Xbox yeah. One, where your main thing is that you're trying to capture planets. You're trying to make planets your base. And there are many different benefits of having a planet as a base, as opposed to having to be wandering, you know, soldiers, you know, mercenaries of fortune in the galaxy, just hovering about in space. But the whole point about Halo would be like, the majority of players spend their time flying around in space because they can't actually take control of a planet because the planets are held by the most amazing clan members who you just can't beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so basically, it's almost like it's very it's almost like the real world where basically the reason that you can't have a planet is because the guys who are there they're all are like handicapped four thousand because they're amazing and once you go in there they wipe your they wipe your asses and you have to basically respawn on your plane far away out of the whatever you call it so you can go to other different like what i call neutral territories that don't are unowned where you can do capture the flag castle whatever you call it but in terms of habitats and planets you have to take the planet and you can't take the planet because all these guys are too amazing. And that will just be what Halo is. It's about conquest. It'll be just basically 
basically it will be like the ring walk mm. and that'll be that'll be ridiculous and you can basically like you can build you can configure your own ship you can optimize it go to different planets that you can get different parts and see whether you can get the kind of parts you need you can join up with other basically you can actually recruit a whole legion mm. no, 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 but remember that's why you say so like why did you take away clans yeah like because clans was just it's, it's 10 points of uh, I don't what they did that. Do because once you have your client, you now build up like you now have again your own planet. Basically, your have own a, basically, imagine this imagine this where I say, okay, Infinity's Limit has got his clan, half of has his clan, I have my clan. And we say, listen, get this other guy, we're going to have about 20 clans. And here's the deal we are going to assault, let's say, Epsilon 4, because these guys are, are the weakest players, the, we, the, the lowest handicap. Yeah. And they're basically they're, they're low hanging fruit. We're just mm. gonna hit hit them with everything we got. And mm. if we capture the planet, then we we, we 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 cut a deal that you take you know this section, you take the north, I take the south, yeah, you yeah, take yeah. the east. And once you get to the planet, you the planet it becomes like Sims, where you can do planting, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff on your yeah, planet. Yeah, yeah. That is basically like a cultivation game. You have different kinds of elements of the game, but you're really attacking and taking a civilization and, and and then without you knowing you can just come under attack exactly <laughs> no no exactly, exactly so you have to be prepared that you could be there for a very short time because the second that they spawn they're going to be coming back to take that planet yeah so it's the very amazing you can have you would have this incredible life ecosystem that would basically be it would si simulate the real world which was basically the ancient times of crusades yeah, yeah, yeah. where you just have soldiers for hire you cut a deal listen let's get the best guys the best clans and guys we, i give you my word we go in there when we get it we we divvy up the, that planet and obviously when they get it they basically kill kill you and take the planet <laughs> basically which would be like the real world yeah. you know well. that's how you know i mean that, that that was a thought i had that listen that's where hello should have gone but we, what basically what i realized just from actually working in the games industry is that these guys they just don't have the ideas it's actually that simple. They really no, don't no, have no, you, you've seen that with like GTA 5 where like it's just about look money. Oh yeah, every, everyone is just playing online. Let's just keep the online server fine and we're just going Hello. to repack. Hello. Listen, I have emotions. I have been in meetings before when I've suggested to some stuff to, 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 to some people quite senior, and mm. they just keep they just keep quiet and look because they've never thought of why they're not doing it. And just because I've said it doesn't mean they're going to do it. <laughs> so they just don't say anything. Because they don't act, it's almost like they don't actually care. They just want to keep doing what they do so they make yeah. their money and, and go home. Yeah. And that's no, 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 I mean, it's basically like gaming has just reached a point of what, like, okay, fine. Motion PSN capture, motion capture, like, motion capture. All I fucking see every day is fucking motion capture, man. That's all these guys do. Just fucking plus. Like, there is no creativity. And I said, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that these guys do not have the creativity because I have seen them and they don't. Yeah, no, it's no, no, about... no, but, but you can see it in just the games that are, are released. Like, I always talk with Infinity, like, like, when we're watching this video, like they said, like, I think 2007 was one of the best game years of gaming. And just look at just what things used to be like. Before DLCs, man, before we've passed. Stuff and so forth. We've passed the prime. That we've passed the prime of gaming, man. It's all downhill yeah. Oh, now. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, oh no, the, the prime is see because the big the the worst thing that happened to gaming was the internet. That was the worst. Thing. Yeah, 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 because, yeah. Because yeah. that opened up pay to pay play, for play, pay for play, and yeah, DLCs was... and so forth. So guys just become lazy. Because see, back in see before internet and and so forth, it was like. Your game has to now be something because all it is is the game. You there is no fix. DLC. There is no internet. So this forty pound thing better be something. <laughs> and have and have up. That is the same. I was talking to someone else the other day about music. But music is like back in the day. You can't go into Spotify. You can't go into anywhere. No. All all you can hear is what you saw on MTV or what you heard on the radio. So when there's a band you like, you're you're going out on a limb. For them because you're like listen like i've heard enough but it's like i'm going to invest 12 13 14 quid in yeah. you guys and so you are buying into them you, mm. you don't just just you, you're like today you have a, a, a 20 year old who you listen to what the music is 
it's it is like it's like Frankenstein. They've got classical, they've got hip hop, they've got jazz, they've got it's just it's like Frankenstein. And it's a very, very different, like that whole concept of okay, you know what I call it? I you know, this is who I am. I'm hip hop, I'm rock, I'm grunge, I'm classical, I'm easy listening, I'm this, I mean there was that kind of understanding, and there was that risk, there was the reciprocation. And what was the fallout of that reciprocation? The quality was better because everybody was investing and they were, they were repaying that investment. Today, it's, today, we live in a time that it just doesn't matter. And that's what Marvel is. Marvel, do, they watched for 10 years. You People have gone to watch films where nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. They're all going, oh my, oh, the, oh civil war. Nobody died. Oh my God! Um, 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 uh, um, Iron Man. Whatever. Nobody died. Oh my God! Is the uh, whatever you call it? Um, Endgame. Nobody. Sorry. Infinity War. Nobody died. Endgame. Nobody died. No. The only time that anybody died was in Avengers Two, where you created a guy to kill him. Well, 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 well Endgame. That's that's rude, though. Black Widow did die in Endgame. As, as, as I said, nobody died. So it's one of those <laughs> lines, you know, nobody. It's a it's, it's a completely complete waste of time. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I mean, it's like <laughs> we just McDonald's. It's cheap. It's easy, and the key thing is, that as soon as you eat it, as unhealthy as it's, it may be, you feel satisfied. You feel satisfied. So that is just what MCU represents. It's McDonald's, just easy, di very digestible. You don't have to. You don't have to think. Forget about thinking too much. You don't have to think. <laughs> Yep. Imagine it's another way. Forget that whole non stuff was like you see, but now nah, no, Nolan. Oh, cool. You don't even have to think about <laughs> Nolan because he's telling you exactly what the film is about. So yep. if you're in you're in doubt, just go to minute 56, 55 where no, if no, you know, if you're in doubt, you're stupid because you don't you're obviously you're obviously not very <laughs> you're not a very intelligent person because he is a guy that will tell you how the game goes, what the mm -hmm. deal is and but I, th I think yeah. Nolan's time is up. I think this is I think this is it for him. This is like I think what's I mean what's Oppenheimer, you want a a hundred and twenty day theater. Wait, who do you think you are? It's incredible. Basically, I think so, somebody at some point has got to slam the desk and literally say that that just who the fuck do you think you are, man? Yes. Someone has to do it. Because I, nobody has ever spoken to him like that. That's why he behaves the way he behaves. Yeah. Do you know? Can you imagine that this man he wants to do a film that isn't it's not even it's not it's not an oh my god it's not an action film it is a film about the development of the atom bomb. no 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 you know I'll, and i'll go with because i did um science communication in ucl and so forth we learned about it so i know the full story of oppenheimer him getting his whole crew and everything so we, we it was it was part of our course and everything Okay. It's just a dude who just got a bunch of guys, and my thing. So he wants Hans Zimmer to, to do the score for that. So so let me guess. Hans Zimmer will do this crazy piece where open up the entrance into the room, <laughs> <laughs> like like Al Alfred. Basically. Yeah, Alfred. Alfred. He's like, no, 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 you're mad. He said, you're, you're mad. He's like, see, see that's why he's. he's, 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 he's no, Look, he, he, that basically, is a Chris, great Chris, last no. Chris, Chris, you okay? You tried it. You tried to be the next Spielberg, Kubrick. You tr okay, and I give you credit. You tried. Mm. You failed. It's over. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up, man. It's finished. You're going to watch Dune, and Dune is going to be better than any film you've ever made. Apart from, <laughs> apart from, me apart from Memento. Apart from Memento, Dune is going to be better. And I've also told people all the time, Sam Mendes is twice the talent half the attitude of Chris Nolan. He's a, he's, oh, yeah. a diff, he's a different side of the same coin. Same Brits, basically. Yeah, probably. same coin, the same place, but he's, he's, he's better. He's, he's you, better. The guy is be better, but uh, um, less attitude. You go and compare 1917 to Dunkirk. Compare oh, yeah. what I like, like, this guy is better than Nolan, but there's no attitude. The man just makes his films. He just makes his films. You think Nolan can make American Beauty? Think, think Donna can make road, road, road to perdition? Come on, man. Come on. No, no, I mean, no, because I just think, like, 
what guys ha- will realize is that like because even like when you like you can't watch interstellar and tell me that's some great film you can't oh and uh, 007 um yeah um <laughs> oh um I'm no not time really, to try. yeah I'm, I'm not really sure how to put this but um um the truth is that it's very unfortunate it's it's extremely unfortunate because um i've just literally watched daniel craig be broken down you know like you go watch casino royale that guy should have been something completely different you know and now by the time we've now come to this we're at a position where because you see with sam mendes he can't get out of public school queen thing he can, mm. because he's a brit so when he was as good as his films were it's very much kept 007 in that like uh, like it was like see here's the thing 007 is not posh 007 is not a lord or the earl of of, of um you know man of sky of skyfall mm-hmm. or something some kind of rubbish backstory they gave him 007 is working class standard 007 as a man you're walking you're working class you're an orphan that's who you are mm. and that is what motivates you that's how you operate you're working class you're basically like michael Caine, get carter that's mm. what you are don't try and say oh his real her- heritage was from skyfall and he was a kid because because you see Samuel is he he just can't handle that because he's so he's a Brit and he's so same as if Chris Nolan made 007, he'll tell you that 007 is actually the Queen's cousin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like like no, that, no, that, no, that'd be the great revelation. Tenet was pretty much Tenet and Inception as like 007 auditions, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if if he did 007, he'll try and be cool and say he's gonna put Don John David Washington. Though. If if Nolan did 007, 007 would, would, would be black. <laughs> and 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 you and you can fill in all the details because you know exactly what he's trying to pull there. He, 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 he'd, be, he'd be black, you know, because it's like you know the guy the guy made him a movie tenant where you you tell us that they pulled all the guy's teeth out. Why? This, this is your hero, by the way. Then then you then he, he goes to a shop and um, Michael Caine tells him that um, you need to your 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 clothes aren't good. You, you need to dress better. I'll tell you where to go and get dressed. Then after he's done that, he goes to the restaurant and the woman tells him that, don't think that just because you, you dress the dress, you can talk the talk and walk the walk. That is what no that also, is what Nolan, also didn't he didn't see once hot sauce at a point in the film? Yeah, I probably did. But basically, those are the break points. You pull out all his teeth, then you tell him that he needs to dress better, then tell him that no matter how well you dress, you can't really handle this. Those are your beat points. So my point is that Chris Nolan, listen, man, if you know you don't want to, what are you doing? Because the guy he's in conflict. The man no, is no, in no, again, it goes back to who you are as a person is very important for the creative work that you do. So of course, no, of course you're a very talented director, but you're a particular kind of person that has here's the thing. There is a bad, there is an amazing Batman film you can make, which isn't what you you did. Yeah, yeah, look, I've said that thousand times. Yeah, because like, and the Batman film that, that you make is like an 18, or at the very least R rated. And I've said, and I've said that every, and every, every time of the day, Batman is Christopher Bale. Every time of the day, the guy to direct it is Christopher Nolan. Every, every, every combination you put into the, into the, the machine, those names will always pop out. At that time, in that period, those, those, are, those are the people. But what happened when they came together was something phenomenal, which was, it was a phenomenon, which was Nolan's personality, which <laughs> no, nobody can cater for. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that, no one's the sort of yes. and, and a combination of that and intellectual intimidation by proxy of, you know, a very sophisticated concept of racism and elitism enabled him to basically warp people's minds around him. No, 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 but, 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 but the most shocking thing, though, is that you think that you could, you would never see that coming. You just think that, oh, the guy who did Memento and Prestige is going to make a very no, dark, no, 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 but, 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 but you, Batman film. 
you 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 can't see it coming. You can't because you don't know who you're. So you know, that, so I said there's a whole couple different conversation with, with about Peter Jackson. There's no point in getting to it now. Mm. But like you can't see that coming because you just same as Brad, Brad Singer made usual suspects. But then when he got Superman, he brought his rubbish to the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was like, like so these guys when they enter this kind of project, they feel oh we don't need to show it any respect. I get to do what I want, and they just start spreading their legs and their arms on, on the sofa and getting comfortable that's what everybody does and you the, which is why you you have to be todd phillips to actually as you say it's about the man yeah like todd phillips is a when you take away the movies basically sit down and have a coffee with a conversation with todd phillips yeah. and sit down and sit down and have a coffee with chris nolan and come back and tell me how the conversation yeah, it's, it's like they're different like nolan can't make a joker he, of course he can because because the guy the guy is flat and dead the guy's flat and dead so he can't and then, and then, and then see, see when you look at memento memento is a cold film that's void of any personality and, and was really by his brother that did it yeah, Not, so, yeah it was, so 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 my thing is that like who like which is why dude is going to be very interesting because i think i know who from watching arrival and 2049 i'm pretty sure who villeneuve is and also i've already said before day of soldado is better than Sic sicario <laughs> yeah yeah like it's just it's it's the dirty truth that people don't want to accept because <laughs> sicario, because day of soldado is that's it. It's a, that's a very good one. Damn, you know I haven't seen that movie. You should probably check it out, bro, bro, bro. What? No, no, you, you, you will like. Day of Day of the Soldado, about twenty minutes in. Basically, about twenty minutes into Soldado, I just started smiling because I was like, I was just like, I haven't felt like this in a long time. That's yeah. At the end of the day, I really like this stuff. Like it's like. I don't pretend to like Ram Rambo too. I really like it. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. I, I think that's I think the issue that people had was when they saw Sicario, it was very subtle. It was very yeah. this other makes no apologies of what it's trying you know, to be. Like the way that Josh Bolin is behaving in the first 10, 15, like, yeah. I'm like, what why can't I see this all the time? Like it's it's <laughs> It's, it's not expensive. You don't need computers for it. It's not CGI. It's you know it's very basic. Why can't I see more of it? And then it's, and it's a, it's a very good point, brother Josh, Josh Brolin. Now take that same director and put him as a Dion. The visuals won't be, be, be there. The look won't be there. But look at what Badem will do in the film. Look at what Brolin will, will do in the film. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You mean, know that that's that's what I'm telling you about about about, about actor choices. You're you're extracting that. Why am I not getting that from Brolin and Dune? Because well, Villeneuve doesn't have because, that kind of analysis. That's not who Villeneuve is. Because I'm like, I know who Josh Brolin is. This and, and, isn't... And, and I know even more so. I know what an older Harrison Ford in a Blade Runner 2049 should really should, be. Should should be. And, 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 that, and, that, and that's, that's 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 not that's not what you brought up of, of the guy. So it's like it is you like you and that's why you guys say oh it's about the it's all about the women in this and blah, 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 blah. you're talking all your rubbish because at the day listen man you're probably a guy who in 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 your life you spend all your time around people like jessica um lady, 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 lady jessica like, like that's who you are you know so i'm like you know what i'm like you know what? and I, listen have a, i listen i give up or not because every everybody's got a problem if it's not this is that if it, like why can't you see in the old world all you guys got filtered out so i never needed to worry about oh is he going to do the right thing because from the time by the time you're getting a shot your name is ridley scott by the time you're getting a shot you are you know the palma by the time mm -hmm. you're getting a shot you're spoke. so i would have to say now see what's in there doing trying, trying to say okay but will will he be on his best day is he going to be the best version of is it back in the day life did its own regulation if, if you're crap, you don't get a shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So by the time you're coming through, you are the right guy for the job. <laughs> because everything is being regulated. And, yeah, also, and, and I think that's what it's... You have an issue in film if Vilnov is now seen as the visionary and the guy. You've got a problem. Because yeah. my thing is, Arrival on 25, no, it's good. 
it's not what Kubrick was doing. It's he's not, never, it's not he's, never made, a, he's hmm? never made a classic. I mean, he's never no. made a classic. Every movie he's made has been baseline pretty good. Yeah. Even but, like Blade Runner. Like, I thought Blade Runner was good, but it, it, it's not yeah, touching no, the original. No, not no, even no, close. No, but basically, his big film was Arrival. And I, I remember because I went to, because I watched Arrival in the cinema. And I remember saying, oh, boss, like, my night is not good. Out of nowhere, this film got an Oscar nomination and was called one of the best sci-fi films in the last 10 years. I like, wait, wait, did I miss something? Yeah, 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 did yeah, I yeah, watch yeah. the same film? <laughs> what? I guess it, my gosh, I'll have it. So I was like, wait, did we watch the same film? So there's just this consensus that he's this amazing, like, he's good. He's not that good. Basically, that, basically the, the issue we have in the world today is that if Monsieur Denny was born 20 years ago, we will not hear about him till he's good enough so he mm. would have he would have all this talent then the world will almost like you know when you're fashioning some kind of steel sword in a furnace it will burn him and mold him into the kind of guy that can now be a proper guy because mm. what we we see in the world today is unfinished products a lot of guys who they are very good and maybe if they were born 20 years ago they still make it but they would have to pay in blood before they make it so by the time they make it, we would see the best version of them. So basically, if Michael Jackson existed today, he'd just be an okay R and B artist. Now, man, you know that guy's pretty good. You know, he's a, oh please. It's an, it's I mean it's and oh no 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 and let, let me even make it worse. Let me if, even make it worse. So keep keep that in mind, guys. Keep that in mind, guys. And let me just make make it worse. You know this looks like Damn. um you know what you know I think it was about um funny or die like SNL. Damn. SNL. This is really and and let me tell you something. Um, let me tell you something. <laughs> if if Morpheus ever existed in the Matrix before he was free, this wouldn't be him. Yeah. Jeez. It's like this. If Morpheus existed as a man in the Matrix, this would not be him. But then again, this see this is weird. Oh, 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 you know, you know what? Actually, you know, you know, I'm now looking at this image differently. Because you know what I'm thinking. What? Why is he looking in the at the mirror like that? Now maybe I'm just just my theory. Maybe his face has changed. So it is Morpheus, but he doesn't look mm. like how he's supposed to look like. Nah, I think he's like, is it real or not? I'm not. I don't know about if it's, or maybe it could be. You know, I don't know. See, 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 see here's what I'm saying. Listen, the whole, the whole time to fly. If it okay, if have if you're saying this is Morpheus trying to wake him up because Morpheus is somewhere in the real world trying to find the Neo and wake him back because they, which I think is obviously what's happening. So if this guy is still alive after revolutions. He's hacked into the matrix and he's trying to find wherever they've hidden Neo and wake him back up. Then the way he's talking to him doesn't make any sense. The way he speaks, and you're and also you're going too far back. So so after everything they've done, he's gonna now go back and be running on walls and fighting yeah. agents and, and giving green and blue. I mean it come it, it's it's too much. It's too much. It's 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 you know, because and my thing is that is this like a reimagining of the because I'm seeing a lot of scenes from from the first film. So are you just reimagining the 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 first film? Where you know the way th yeah let's say like an ulterior dimension where things the same scenarios but them happening. Maybe because world. remember they can get away with it because Matrix Deja Vu, you know. With the, the like, black cat, the, the glitch in the program, where like they're just um, replaying a program that we've already seen before, and the yeah, people are like, the, the, the black cats, the black cats, the black cats. Yeah. Yeah, did, yeah, you guys, did you guys notice that like that that scene that, that they showed off? Wait, the, so, uh, you know, this was a week ago, by the way. The guy on the right. This is from like a week ago. <laughs> What's what you saying? No, I was just saying how um, I noticed that a lot of the action scenes take place in. Uh, Places we've seen, like that that one shot when they're going through the corridor and yeah. everyone's flipping around. That's the, like the same scene at the end of the first Matrix film. One hundred percent. 
this is looking at the first film through a new perspective like when he fights um smith in the subway that's the exact same subway like when you see the bullets flying down from the helicopter when you see him when you see the this film is about oh wait a minute this has happened before but it's just from a new perspective how basically basically how i do not have an hour of my life to watch neo discover his powers again <laughs> i mean look that's what i was trying to tell you said like i i i'm not interested in, in watching i find out people go wow have you ever thought whether this is real or not wow search deep inside you and mm -hmm. find the truth no we did that 20 years ago we can't do it again because you want to have like catharsis i'm sorry but it's like what and i'm yeah. and i'm and I'm, I'm now going to watch like you know jennifer aniston friends co co coffee shop scenes oh oh hi hiya yeah oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. And then you've got, you you couldn't even have hope. Give him a ponytail. Make him bald. Yeah, yeah, like that. Could, see, 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 see. No, no, no. What I think they were saying that, like, um, it was filmed at the same time as John Wick and so forth, even though you can't have him looking the same as, as John, John Wick. This is ridiculous. Oh, okay, it's, then, all, hey, it's all marketing, man. Okay, they want to they use that same look. Exactly, because, okay, worst case scenario, give him a ponytail. Give him a ponytail. Do anything to just distinguish him from John Wick. You can't just, he looks like it's John Wick walking around. Yeah. And that is stupid. That is stupid. What's it mean the whole John John Wick look? No, this picture you're showing oh, me right now. Because, this is when I said because, that, this because, is amazing. See, this picture screams one thing to me. This is my friend. And it's time for her to be powerful too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm powerful. This is for uh, you. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? Uh, man, that yeah. is that is unprofessional. It is ridiculous. It is beyond it is unprofessional. Like, let's just have our mates do stuff. That's what it is. Let's, let's it's like let's just have our mates do stuff. You know. And this character, you see. They keep putting characters like this, like with the other, what was the other one? Was it um, Ghost or I can't remember who was it? Switch in, yeah. Like these characters just seem to be like, okay. This is from LG, LGBT or something, but things that they're never good. They're just there. They are never actually good. So like, well, I mean, maybe this is supposed to be like the new main character, maybe somehow. You see, if, if she was a new main character, they, they would have featured her differently in the, in the trailer. She's too much of a help a help, helping person. So you would have been a, it's a very daft trailer if she's not like a main person. She's just like there. And why does this Yaya Abdul guy, he always looks like he, he's not in full control of what's going on. <laughs> like, 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 even that scene where he's running through through the, the corridor, it looks like... It looks weird. Yeah, this is like, 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 I'm like, mate, 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 mate. It just looks mate. awkward. It, just it looks, looks, it looks, it looks awkward. You know, uh, no, but 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 you see, this is just like a replaying of the of the dojo scene. So you're just reimagining all the scenes we've seen from the from the first film. So he, he, I think this is going to be okay. So in this scene, he goes, think I think he's he's trying to jog his memory. Mm. Okay, so so obviously. You've got this Morpheus, and I think half of you may have touched on something there. He mm. looks he looks different. Yeah, it, 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 it might be something like that, you know. But then, but see, half of his which would be even a uh, great disrespect. It's a great disrespect, and it's also racist for one reason. If he has to look different, why does he have to be black? What do you mean by why does he have to be black? Wouldn't it be more interesting if he was like a Chinese or an, an Indian guy or somebody who he was Morpheus, but he, like oh. basically, mm. basically like like quantum leap, like quantum leap. Oh yeah, when, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever you call it. Okay, that obviously in this world it would be controversial because of race and everything, but mm. story wise that would be more interesting. Why would he be Morpheus and he'd be like black? Unless he's come back as his younger. I mean, look, basically. 
you know what? I mean, he's this, on, I mean, this film is going to be like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> no, no, because you see, my thing is that you can't not address the Morpheus. Because it's weird, because even when I was watching the Q&A, they sort of brought it up, but they didn't really build upon it. It's like, you, that's, you can't not address that. But the key, the key to Morpheus is that you didn't have the courtesy to call Lawrence Fishburne and tell yeah. him. I mean, it's, it's, See, it's, and this is weird because I'm guessing that's going to be him older, but it doesn't look like him older. It looks like someone else. Yeah. So, I'm like, so if that's meant to be him older, that is some stupid movie making. Because why not just make make it be him? Like, well, no, no, is, no, no, it has to be someone else. It has to be someone. It's, it's got to be because basically, is, my thing is that this film could just be a case of like, let's just do whatever random stuff, and I mean, it's like. Well, you know, they definitely chose the right song about taking pills and doing drugs. Oh, you know. Um, no, 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 no. But for me, this was this was the worst part of the trailer. Was this? Yay! This was really I have the power. Yeah, because I was like, okay, this is no, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. And this. and and okay, first of all, look at how she's screaming. She's not taking it seriously because I bet that Carrie Ann Moss, the woman, is kind of bored, so she's not taking it seriously. And when did Trinity ever do this before? So, like, just like, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's, it's not just, just not something that she would do. Exactly. So, like, so it, it is so. This is so reeks of your friends. It's so reeks of your mates. That's a good image. And this, this, you, you want to replace this guy, this dude here. I mean, listen, half hope. Look at that image. It's like, you don't, you don't replace this. And you see, there's so much in Matrix that people just forget. And I remember the scene. And I remember the scene. No, no, you know what? So I think this was like my, it was probably my fifth time watching it. I remember when he rolls over, he slices the thing with the samurai sword and shoots. <laughs> there was an older lady in, in front of me who just started to basically just clap. <laughs> it happen, it's like, that's what it is. It's like, you have to understand, like, basically, that's why, that's just what is so sad. Where, and, and it can happen, the creators, I don't think you know what Morpheus is. For them, maybe, oh, this is just a character. And now, yeah, I, I didn't keep in touch with Lawrence Fishburne, but I always kept in touch with Keanu and Carrie Ann. Yeah, let me bring back Carrie Ann because I really like 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 them. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, well, it's, it's, it's strange because he, he came back for Predators, which is not even even on the same level of like The Matrix. Yeah, but, but he, he, he won't come back for this. Maybe, no, no, in, maybe. in Infinity, he is, he's ready. They they didn't they haven't even call them. That's what's been so sad. Maybe, maybe it's something like you touched on. Maybe it's a case of some of these actors. Maybe when the Wachowskis went a bit down, they didn't, uh, they didn't some, care. You something know, political they, happened there, I guess. Yeah, like maybe, maybe they all forgot about them, but Keanu and those guys always kept in touch. Maybe that's the thing. You know? No, 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 because, because, because obviously, um, you know, um, it's funny because like when you were asked that, oh, I felt that, and what's always brought back, um, made me happy was Neo and Trinity. Ask anybody on the road. Oh, come on, when you think of Matrix, what's the first character you think of? It's, it's, well, it's a debate it's, between Neo and Morpheus. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we see it goes Neo, Morpheus, Smith. Yeah. Maybe Cipher. <laughs> then you go to Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's been true. Most people, when you think of oh, that base Matrix film, the the image you think of is. Neo Morpheus. No, Morpheus. no, and listen, have a no disrespect to no disrespect to Carrie and Moss. None mm -hmm. intended. But let's get real. Nobody gives a toss about Trinity. No, and, no, no, no one does. And no. and that and that and here's what I mean. I love Carrie Ann Moss. She's a wonderful person. I really mm -hmm. wish all the best. The truth is that she's not a great actress, and she did not do a lot with the role. Because yeah. there was more than enough opportunity for her to be an iconic character, but she's not. And that's because the actress herself is just not that good. 
she's just not that good. She, and I'm sure she's obviously a very nice person in the real world. Well, and, and, and also, that's, that's why the weakest thing of the first Matrix was the love story was not yeah. very good. Because, because you're dealing with a rubbish actor and a very average actress. Exactly. So there was nothing going on there. Nothing going on there. So, but but, but see, it's it's like see, it's difference between Mark Hamill and um, um, Leia, where not the greatest actors, but there was just something about their personalities. Uh, no, I, I, I think you mean Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher. Oh no, no, but but even the the trio of them. Yeah, but ba no, no, but basically the Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher, mm. that's really popped. Yeah. That, and the things that when you now do this, but they were actually having sex off screen and 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 smoking pot yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. during yeah. during Empire Strikes Back. So yeah. it's like because when you watch Empire Strikes Back, there's really something going on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, no, no, so, so, so my thing is that like, you can't think that you that Neo and Trinity is this kind of. No, nah, you can't do that. You know, can't do that. because when you look at the, the trailer, everybody's saying, wait, you see, put it this way. If you had Neo and Morpheus, how many people would be saying West Trinity? Say West Trinity. I mean, come on, you know? Like, oh, well, we're back. But now everyone's like, wait, where's Morpheus? Even if Yaya says, I'm Morpheus, guys are like, no. Oh, where's Morpheus? <laughs> <laughs> no, where's, where's Morpheus? So I'm like, you know, um, I think basically, I think the interesting thing that's going to happen is that the closer the movie gets to reality, they're going to be getting too many questions about yeah. Lord of oh, yeah. yeah. so, Like the more, as it gets towards Christmas, then they're going to have to start answering questions that they would rather not be answering. And then it's going to actually, the penny's going to drop, you know. And listen, how awkward is it going to be of the sets of John Wick? Yeah. How awkward is that going to be? Because, because I think Keanu actually personally went to ask um fishbone to be and I, don't, I don't know what he did but they actually hang out basically they're good friends mm. him and um thing are, are good friends so, so no like and see for keanu it's a case of like because you can't really blame him for it and so forth it's the decision it's their decision there's nothing you can do come on. yeah so you, you can just say oh please get Lawrence like that's, it's just because no, no, because and and that is disrespectful to Lawrence Fishburne. Like that, you don't need to be asking. Yeah. Oh no, 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 you know, no. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Come so, on, so, like, of a, a guy of his stature and so forth. No, no, way. no, 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 no. So if you're, you know, I mean, it's is. Yeah. No, 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 guys, this is the dude who explained to us what the Matrix was. The most one of the most iconic scenes in cinema history. <laughs> I mean, wow. Wow. Damn. Well, um, actually, I got to go, guys, but um, oh, okay, man. I appreciate the talk, man. Hey, man. Yeah, it was cool, good. Man. It was good. Nice yeah, speaking to you, man. You know, have a good one, mate. All right. I'll see you guys later. Stay Peace, Peace. Peace. Oh, man. I mean, this, I mean, no, it's, it's, oh, no, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's disgusting, man. It's it's absolutely it's absolutely it's, 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 it's for me the only thing for me is curiosity, just cur cur curiosity. But it's that's why there is you can throw racism and stuff in there. It's like oh yeah, it's just just get like who's the hottest black actor right now? Oh yeah yeah Abdul Mateen yeah, Morpheus. Okay, it's racist. That's what it is. Yes, yeah, it's, it is. It is, and because, because that, this literally is, hey, who is the go-to black actor right now? Come on, you can't do that for Morpheus and Matrix. You can't do that to Lawrence Fishburne, but... Look, I, I, yeah, like, you know, um, I said, look, for you, mate, good luck, enjoy it, you know, be prepared, because it's all going, it's all going downhill, mate. It's all, it's, 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 it's all going downhill, mate. So I mean, just lastly before, because I even need to head to bed because it was fine. Um, what do you actually think Dune will be as a film if you were to make a call? Because I think I can already make a call of what I think the film is going to be. What do I think Dune will be? That's an interesting question, mate. What do I think Dune will be?
I think June will be good. I think it'll be good. And so I think it, was it not like? I don't think it's 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 cannot I it can't be amazing because I've seen too many problems with the decision actors are making, mm. and you've got with Jason Momoa you've got a problem. <laughs> You know, it's like I mean, like I, I cannot understand how people can see that and you don't say, "Listen, mate, we have got, got to work this out." Oh no, like, no, no! Because once woman, it's like Drake. Once woman loves someone, guys just get on board, <laughs> and women yeah. love Jason Momoa. Yeah, but they can they can get on board and be on every boat and on board with him. But Denny, you're making a film here, mate. <laughs> you're, you're not you're not looking for people to be on board. You're making a film. And it's like your the man is ruining your film. The man is ruining your film. Like the scenes I've seen of just Momoa in Dune are horrendous. Horrendous. We're gonna we're gonna fight like demons. I'm just like, man, this is terrible stuff, man. And, and, and also that is the kind of role in which you know that can be like a see like a movie stealer because hey he's the obviously the fighter kind of guy you know yeah, but you know? that's that's basically that's the whole point mm. it's a bit like nolan nolan is supposed to be the intellectual visionary author of our time that's what he's supposed to be that's what he screams out that's what he sells us but it's not Jason Momoa is supposed to be the it guy, the charismatic guy, the guy who, who can just about do everything with his winning personality and his lovely, but he's not. He's just a model that women like. Yeah. See, I mean, that's the problem. Like, the world doesn't that You can't force those things. Those guys that are from the 80s and the 90s, they are who they are because they are who they are. It's not a mistake that an Austrian became the most the biggest guy in Hollywood because he actually he has something. Mm. There's a reason why he was voted as a governor. Because you know, people don't vote people as a guy as a governor if they don't like the guy. Like, there's a reason that Bruce Willis was what he was. There's a reason that that idiot Van Damme was what he was. These guys were exceptional people. Exceptional. Half of them are foreign, the other half have speech, they have speech impediments, they can't speak. And these are the guys who were the top guys in Hollywood. You're looking at a guy who is like Jason Momoa. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. And you're just going to force him down the line. And man, this guy looks terrible, man. This guy is basically his guy is doing a bad job. And that's going to come because and he's an important character in the film. You're going to you're going to you're, he's compromising the film. He's compromising. He's coming. So basically, you're you're going to have a problem. Moving, and I said about the whole Oscar Isaac. It's like mm. that's bad. It's, it's bad casting because that is not. Is it Baron George? Is it George Little? Baron Little? Was it? Yeah. Is it Baron? I, th I think it's Baron. I guess, but it is since I read the book. But I think okay, fine. Baron. Anyway, see, that is not the Baron. I've never read Dune, but that's not the guy. That's not the guy. And didn't you're pretty stupid for putting him in that role? No, 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 that, that's what it's it's like basically, basically it's, 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 no, no, basically it's, it's, it's simple like compare Sean Young in Blade Runner to that Anna de Armas in 2049. Yeah. I mean th that's it. It's like you know, you're looking at because Sean Young, she can't act, she's rubbish. Mm. So everything Sean Young did was based on Ridley Scott saying yeah. that I'm an artist. And for me, the most important thing is what you look like. And you look right. So yeah. I'm going to regulate you. And mm. all you saw in Blade Runner was an actress being regulated. <laughs> you just saw, you saw it, and she was regulated extremely well. What you have in this, that if you like the look of Jason Momoa, you've got to regulate the guy. Otherwise, he's going to run amok and do this rubbish. <laughs> but but Denis Villeneuve does not have the sophistication himself to regulate, which is why he had that diamas. De you see Sean Young. And you go with that trash for your film. <laughs> I mean, so, look, granted, she may look lovely and she looks lovely and everything. She is garbage. As in, true. but see, that's open because again, yeah, Sean Young is limited, but again, it's about you knowing someone's limit, limit, limitations. But Villeneuve, you're like, oh, just act. 
Yes. Yeah. Just allow that just to. And, you can't just allow and, 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 just to act. And, and then you come and tell us that for Blade Runner, the women were this. Basically, there was a whole bunch of interview stuff I wanted to send you guys way before mm. this came about all the stuff said about. I just forgot to do it because the, the, the women are the secret strength of Blade Runner. When a man is talking that dog crap, and you now come in, and Zima is going to all the women. So Zima never talk, sells that crap. Zima is talking about women and all that crap because Vilno has told him that crap. And that's the tip they have now gone on. And you want to, and I'm like, listen, you stupid man. Do, see, that's what, Benji, I am bored and I'm tired. No, 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 but, but it's, it's, it's why I had to take a break from movies because I was like, I saw a pattern now where unless you do it yourself, <laughs> you're always going to be disappointed. No, 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 you're done, you're done. I'm listening. For me, as you said, look, you're not going to hear from me. Look, I said, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm undercover now. I'm, I like, I'm, I'm out. No, no, because, because my I'm thing out, is, look, if, if, if Dune comes and the guy totally misses the mark, I mean, then it's, it's over. It's over. He, he, I think the issue that we have now is that we as an audience, as people, as consumers, have become a bit too savvy. So we are, we are not going to be fooled by any rubbish, which mm. is why, because I've been mean, very specific. I'm like, like, the, the saving grace that this film has is its lead, which is a very, very good thing. Because I can't remember the last time I saw stuff and I thought that the best thing about this film might have to be Paul Atreides. That's an incredible yeah, no, 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 position. No, 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 how it's supposed to work is the lead is vacant, like Neo, Keanu Reeves, and it's the stuff around the lead. This, yeah, it would be, be just Brolin or um, Let's Fight Like Demons that actually yeah. bring them up. It looks like this guy's a guy. He's going to be doing the heavy lifting. No, 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 because I think, because I've seen films that he's done, and my thing is that if you're trying to pick a young actor, he's the best thing. Because if, because there's a film that he did with um, um, Robert Pattinson about like this French king and, and so forth. And if you're going to pick a young guy, he's probably the best young actor you're going to pick. As I said, look, I didn't see that um, uh, the king or I don't know what it was. We'll call that. Um, um, I said I, I have not seen any films he's been in. I haven't mm. watched any films. I'm going by what I've seen in the trailer. Oh no, no, no! I think so, even if you've not seen the stuff, there's just a feeling you get when you see the trailer. They, they, now you hope that okay. I don't know. Listen, I said, look, you asked me that. Can I just say that based on the trailer? That's what you asked me just now. Yeah. But now, now you're saying there's a feeling. What you ask? Oh, 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 no. put, it, put it this way: from that trailer, I don't know what he can do in the context of like a two and a half hour film. But what I can say is that just of the feeling, I'm like, oh, this seems to work. Now, will it work when we now watch scenes? Because it works in oh, hints here, little. So then I walk in full scenes, full dialogue, two and a half hours. And I have to follow you for 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 two and a half hours. So, well. You know, I've already told you before, so it's all it's all there. You know, it's all recorded. So there's there's no there's no mysteries of what I believe is going to go down. Um, and you know, we'll see what happens, man. You know. So, okay, so so you are going to watch Matrix Red Resurrections for for sure. Benji, that is going to be one fun time watch, man. That's going to be one no, see, fun time. One of the, I am incredibly curious because my thing is like i have no idea what the hell i'm i'm gonna see and that's well, the, 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 the way thing is that of all this stuff there's nothing in the trailer i've seen that's i mean i'm excited to see there's there's nothing no, yeah no it's just like, i'm just excited to see what the hell is this film which 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 is the scary thing <laughs> the, the scary thing is that everything i've seen in the trailer i have no interest in seeing and a lot of what i saw in the trailer was annoying like that mm. trinity shouting and stuff like that it was annoying, and that, that girl doing a backflip over on the bin looking like a cartoon character. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's, like, that's, that's things to look. I mean, they, like, I'm like, come on. Yeah, come like, on. This, this, this stuff I've seen looks looks stupid. So it's weird that I only want to watch it just to know what the hell they thought, what the hell this Wachowski thought she could do. Yeah. I'm just like, you are one seriously gutsy individual who has a very high opinion of your individual abilities that you think you can take a fraction and arguably the least talented fraction mm. of your matrix team 
you're talking about a guy that cannot act and a woman that's an average actress. Yeah. You're taking the least talented, fra you know, it feels very much like you're somebody proving a point. And, and, and then you're pairing them with, I don't know where Jessica Hennick is from. Yaya Abdul Mateen is average. He's average. Let's just keep it real. He's average. Okay. So I don't care whether he's a no. As an actor, he's average. And he should not be mentioned in the same stratosphere or existence as Lawrence Fishburne. So bad actor, average actress, an actress that I don't really know much of, and an average actor. That's your core for. No, the, 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 for me, the scariest thing about Fishburne is something that, that has dawned on me, which is why I made the point earlier over the last few years that mm -hmm. the man is an incredible actor. Who? Lawrence Fishburne. But like basically, because when I was doing the whole actor thing and everything, I basically watched his whole Othello stuff and, and everything, and I was like, oh, like, like, no, no, like the man, the man is no, an no, no, that's, that, that's what makes it scary is that when you look at Morpheus, you can look, okay, Morpheus, sci fi, science fiction, but you have to understand the level of actor that was, oh, we're not doing the whole sci fi thing here. So it's a combination of his black, the level of actor that he is. And it's now sci-fi. So there's so many different levels. And when you see what Morpheus did, you can't play with that. That's magic. <laughs> and that's really is the that is the foundation of your film. Because Keanu Reeves will just do Keanu. Karen will do Karen. But Lawrence Fishman is the guy that just brings everything together. That's why he explains the matrix to us. <laughs> because it's like, no, no, this is the guy that's gonna tell us exactly just what the heck this is about. And it's one of the most iconic films in cinema history. So to not respect that, it's, it's, that's that's quite scary. Hence why, oh, this film is trash. Like, I, I, I completely re reject this film at all. Completely reject. I'm curious to see what this indie, independent indie film is about. This ain't, this ain't part of The Matrix. No. So let's just see what, what, what this guy's got. Cool. Yeah, <sighs> Michael Keaton is going to be back in some movies. I'm just like, I'm like, everybody should calm down. If anybody's coming back, they are coming back with Tim Burton. If Tim Burton isn't doing it, to, um, um, I don't want to see my computer. Yeah, you no, know, no. I see that's my issue with this whole Flash thing is that, okay, cool, Keaton is there. Its presentation is, is key. Just seeing Keaton in a suit, that's all cool, but... Yeah, like, like, as I said, like, listen, you know, how, where, you, how are you going to light it? You know? Exactly. You know where Button is. And let's listen, they, they, you know, guys, calm down. You know, you want to do it right, you're going to get Button. Because basically, all that is happening is at Benji, everything is falling apart. And people are just going, that, that's all That's all the multiverse is. All the multiverse is is a cheap ploy by greedy studios to always be able to reboot and do whatever they want when they fail and screw up. And the idiotic, foolish crowd are just eating it up. What, what kind of world are we living in where I'm going to see three Spider-Men in the same film? I'm going, to see, <laughs> I'm going to see five Batman. What kind of rubbish is this? It's, it's, it's crazy. So Ben Affleck is there. Robert Pattinson is now there. We now have Michael Keaton. Basically, it's, this is the issue about FC. See, before... This whole comic book, book stuff, you bring out a film, okay, the film does well. You now bring out a sequel, okay, you maybe have little franchises, but you know, now you have a world where things have been rebooted, reimagined. You have five versions of a character. Every, every, every you know that, that, that um, they are calling the um, Sony thing the Sony Spider Man universe. Yeah, yeah. The Sony Spider Man. It's, what? This is it. What people don't realize is that comic books are for guys from the road. Comic books, anything goes. You can't bring that to cinema. <laughs> All that stuff that these comic book guys did with because you have to sell issue 115 and, and so forth. So this story... And, and you need your rent. You need your rent that week. <laughs> so, so, because guys said, oh, oh well, this happened. I know it's a question. It's, it's according to issue 127, but issue 127 was Benji, a guy Benji, that's not Benji, 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 <laughs> if they had to do... If they have... If a man... Has literally got his got to go to the dentist. They'll make they'll make sup, sup, Superman gay. They make him gay. <laughs> 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 you can't do that because when people say that 
he was this he was that's an issue 105 because, <laughs> I'm, because I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a deadline i'm in a contract you best bring up something at the end of this <laughs> <laughs> <Something, Yeah. laughs> <something. laughs> and, and also the kid is that when you ask him i say of course it was a dumb idea but i have to think of something <laughs> And when and after he he was gay for that week, the next episode he said he had a he had a brain. It was it was, it was a hallucination. <laughs> because that's, like this, oh lord, oh it's it's. They can, they can you, you, know? you can find it. This is why, like this comic book thing. It's like the wild wild west. You've entered into a. Because you've entered into a scary territory where, like, the kinds of stuff that has been done in comic books should never see the light of day. <laughs> in form, you know? So, but now, because you're now onto this train, you're like, we have a wealth of stuff we can just pull from. So. Yeah. When, when a strange, when a strange, strange, strange time. Right, so let me, let me, let me go to Betty, Betty, bye bye. All right, so let me. All right. See you around, man.